Hello, hello, hello! Ah, and welcome back to the misdemeanor. Hope y'all doing well today. Hello, welcome back, everybody. Uh, what music's playing currently? Uh, yeah. Wait, no, Dark Wind Sailing. Yes, yes, absolutely. Howdy, everybody. Hope you're having a good day today. Happy Friday, y'all. Hope y'all are being super comfy today. Uh, I was just about to thank some subs, but then my streamlabs crashed. What are we thinking? Base Deke with a tier two sub for 32 months, man. Thank you so much. Love you, Brett. Hey, love you too, man. Mads5408 with the 10 gifted subs. Thank you again for that generous gifted subs. Man, remember, if you got gifted a sub by Mads, be sure to thank them in chat for the generosity. I'm going to go ahead and unmute and see how my pirate crew is doing. Like, Hello. On, let's just do Hello, it. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so right. How, how y'all yeah. doing today? Hello. Super Hello. good. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Uh, so good. You so, don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. And yeah, that Brett, is what why. do you know? What do you know about <laughs> being good, my dude? Uh oh. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I guess that's it for the misdemeanor today. <laughs> See y'all next week. No, 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 it was just a bit. It was just a bit. I'm sorry. No, 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 if that's if that's the way it's gonna be, time to ramp up the difficulty level, my dude. <laughs> you fools! You fools! Absolutely! You doomed us all! <laughs> you doomed us all! <laughs> nah, it's okay. I can, uh, I can take it. I can, I, I can, uh, <laughs> I can take it. All right. So. <laughs> I can take it. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You're reassuring yourself. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Need a minute. <sighs> okay. All right. So today is going to be an interesting and fun little session because you guys have a lot of crossroads that you are currently at. So first, I'm going to bring you back to the... Wait, where am I? Hello? What am I doing? Oh, yeah. You're here. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi, no, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm loading the. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. It's roll 20. It's a lot of things I have to manage. One second. I'm getting everything loaded so the viewers know what they're looking at. And also, I didn't have my sailing music, so. Let me do this. <laughs> I thought you said saline, not oh, sailing. Yes. <laughs> I didn't have my saline music today, so you know. That would be salty, though. It was like, a yeah. rough day. <laughs> uh, I'm making sure. You guys ever, you guys ever like, laugh at the fact that like, something like AT and T is like on Twitch right now, having an <laughs> Among Us tournament. Wait what? What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Amazing. <laughs> the front page Twitch right now is AT and T Among Us, twenty thousand people, and the caption is: "The final week of the AT and T Annihilator Cup is now live as twenty streamers battle it out for a grand prize of three hundred thousand dollars. Who can <laughs> vent their way to victory and be yeah, crowned okay. the champion?" What? Like, Wait, this is the company about phones. What? <laughs> this, is company, this is the company about phones, and we're. It, it's 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 just wild to me. It's I'm not like mad. I think it's hilarious. It's incredible. <laughs> I yeah, mean, that's just that's that's the you know you ever you ever you ever think about you know when when we were very young, just playing some video games, just being being little little nerdy guys, you know, mm. uh huh. That 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 you would see AT and T's three hundred thousand dollar sponsorship on this video game platform about a about a video game, and you can mm -hmm. you know it's become such a mainstream mm -hmm. thing. I absolutely love it. So. It's it's definitely fascinating. It's wild. I'm it, yeah. yeah, it's a wild experience. I'm glad that we're there. The oh yeah, absolutely. Like Snickers and stuff, where it's like now loading, you know, and like all these like fast food places. I hate that. Video game thing. I fucking yeah. I hate that. I've I've been, <laughs> I, 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 I've uh I've I, I'm pretty sure I've said that before. I'm almost certain I've said that to you guys. 
but man uh, you know so, sorry papa twitch or not it's not even twitch it's not even twitch just the advertisers these ads are just like yeah, your, sorry snickers yeah <laughs> your 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 grandpa's ads that are like what do i think video games are because we need to get these guys to they eat a snickers you know and it's just like it's just everything's just this over exaggerated video game ad like i'm like yo i get that video I games I, you know? I, like, yeah. I like the ones that are like hey gamers we get it you vape you need to have your energy <laughs> <laughs> we know, we know, we know that know. you need to keep gaming so what we're gonna do Gamer, oh gamer energy, f coffee, Here coffee. You, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just like caters to the indulgence. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that, just, that got me. What the heck? Right, like, <laughs> brand. <laughs> we get it, gamers. You vape. <laughs> I so, I so desperately want that to be a line in an ad somewhere. Um, <laughs> That, that, that to me is like the marketing guys oh. like look gamers don't like being talked down to let's just tell them the facts yeah we get it gamers <laughs> we get it you babe <laughs> we get it gamers your fingers are infused with cheeto dust from all the gaming you're doing <laughs> oh my god here's some wet naps to here's some wet naps <laughs> keep them on your side gamer naps <laughs> <laughs> We get uh, it, gamers. You sweat a lot. Here's some wet naps. Here's some wet naps. I <laughs> don't want to stop your gaming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the copy for gamers by gamers. By <laughs> such a weird turn, guys. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's my fault. I I am single handedly ruining this D and D stream. No, you're no, not. You're we're not. making this, it better. No, this <laughs> this is this is this is honestly what D and D is all about. That's why I'm always down for the pre-show. <laughs> The pre-show rant because i mean that's a D, D to me is a bunch of buds around the table you guys are just hanging out vaping, chatting away right? vaping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laura. just just vaping away <laughs> just vaping Brett, yes. Vape I, think together. I, I think it's time that we make dodger can you world, pass me the cheetos the world, the world of io vape collection Mm. Gotta, easy. Gotta, <laughs> gotta have I mean, to I'm pretty sure Luna like is Luna that vapes. I, you pretty sure Luna, Luna vapes? vapes is Luna that Luna that you know, she probably did some hookah thing. I don't know. I wouldn't you know, be surprised. She I, uh, I mean, goblins. I mean, it's uh, I mean, that's that's, that's brand. Uh, that's all. Yeah, it's on brand, and also entirely up to you, as 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 Luna would. So, um, I think I think from a moral standpoint, I wouldn't have a world of IO. <laughs> like the first, God, imagine just the first world of IO like actual product that comes out. It's not like a T-shirt or like a dice set. It's a, just a vape. Just a vape. <laughs> Jesus. I had to Google some vape thing because someone Whoop. sent me a picture. They're like, I didn't play Plants vs Zombies, but I, but I, I dab. I oh. dabbled or dabbed <laughs> what? And then they had a picture of something, and I'm like, what is that? Is that inappropriate? I can't even tell. It looked like um, I'm trying to say it without saying something bad. It looked like a like a a device for females. I'll just put it that way. And uh, so I was oh, like, God. what is this? <laughs> Apparently it's a vaping thing. It's so I I didn't know that. And it had Plants vs Zombies characters all over it. I was like, nice. okay, <laughs> you do you. That's cool. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god! I just I just just so we're clear. I just googled Plants vs Zombie bong. Didn't know that existed. There's one of those. Oh my For god. fifty bucks, it is a Plants vs Zombie silicone. What? Wrong. Oh my oh my God. God. That's right. That's right, gamers. <laughs> gamers. <laughs> we get it, ganger. <laughs> gamers. Gamers. Yeah. gamers. We get it. Sometimes you want to play Plants vs. Zombies and toke it up. <laughs> Smoke that plant once you fight those zombies. <laughs> Man. Shoot. This, man, this, this, this is this. This conversation <laughs> is the weirdest pre 
No, this. no, it's fine. This conversation is so distracting. I'm like, switch over to the D and D screen, and the D and D screen's just not ready. And I'm just like, I, I'm, I can't even think straight. But we're here. <laughs> We've done it. <coughs> We've made it. Oh my gosh. I'm I've got perishing. I'm dying. I've got, I've got, I've got Uber Eats on the way. I'm gonna. It's, it's a little breakfast while we do some D and D. Let's Ugh. go. <sighs> Gamers. Okay, so um <laughs> So as mentioned before, uh you guys have just recently defeated uh the Cosma creature that seeks out combat in the middle of the ocean. Uh it summoned a massive, this massive huge like Cosma beast, which is an app which was an aberration um for any D D like at those that individuals that have played DD uh before. Uh, Io does not have aberrations. It, it just hasn't existed. There's nothing known about aberrations. Um, for those that haven't played D&D before, uh, aberrations are, and, and Dodger, maybe you, Dodger and Joe, maybe you can, and uh, Hunter, actually, yeah, maybe you, maybe you can correct me on this, but aberrations are kind of like the weird, abnormal, like out of the, they're, they're almost alien in nature, would you say? Yeah, that's like, how they describe it, like an yeah. alien. But yeah. also like the sometimes Eldritch they're made of creatures. bugs. I don't know. Yeah, Elders creatures, aliens, just something that's just completely not natural. Abnormal. Abnormal, exactly. Exactly. That's, that ain't right. So <laughs> and, so the creature that you fought was was an aberration. Um very alien like in, in, in nature. Uh with some quick thinking on um Alice's part, uh banishment allows you all uh to Essentially, prepare uh, yourselves for an entire minute against this creature, blasting it away with cannons. And after a few rounds of that, you made quick work of the monsters. And we learned that cannons are pretty awesome. So with that, you'll be sailing the misdemeanor uh, into dungeons, shoving that boat deep within the labyrinth, <laughs> pointing those <laughs> cannons and blasting anything that gets in your wood. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> But uh, but but yeah. So after that, after completing that, you, you're still off uh, off in the in the deep ocean off the coast of uh, of Kreshart. Alis thought to himself uh, a need of more books, and the oh my god, oh, yeah. I completely fucking forgot about that. And and uh, and the level and the and the roll one hundred wild magic finally went off, which was a a wish or a desire. A strong desire, and uh, yeah, with that, uh, you all have you have all the books you could ever need for the rest of your life. So you know you won the jackpot. Congratulations! <laughs> I did it, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wish pretty much went. Nerds, we get it. You read books, so here you go. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. You like books. You like books, so you have. And it's like I said, it's it's not just like a plain, like they're not plain books. They're all just a variety of you know designs, leather bounds, things of that nature that you are free to interpret, uh, free to role play out. You can just have a variety of books. Um, yeah, you just essentially. But the only thing is the room that Alice is in, filled, stacked up with books at this point in time. <gasps> But uh, but with that, you guys are off on the coast, and now we need to have a little talk misdemeanor. Oh, God. A talk. That's intimidating. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we did it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What did you guys do? I didn't do anything. We... No, no, Joe. What did you motherfuckers do? <laughs> no, 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 no. For the record, no, no, for, no, no, no. for the record, it's not that kind of talk. No, 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 no. I was just, I was just pretending. I was just being the boy that owned up to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I thought you were saying that like Astral Academy just completely Shh. fucked Io up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Ruined. Yeah, I was like, I do oh, that. No, I, I, I think where Astral Academy and Honestly, I think I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I think we're asked with, with uh, misdemeanors actually kind of a little behind on the timeline right now. So um, just because everything you have been doing has been back to back. 
uh, since leaving uh, the Astral Academy. So you there re there really hasn't been a time for like a a, a time catch up, essentially. But depending on what you're doing, there will be. So. <clears throat> That's the talk that we need to have. There's a lot of things that are on your plate as a pirate crew would. And with that, discussions will probably need to be had amongst your crew of what what you'll do next. Uh, since IO is a, a wonderful sandbox world that allows you to essentially choose the path and direction that you want to go. Um, today, we need to discuss that path and where exactly the misdemeanor is heading off to next. Uh, the... Battle against Cosmicara still looming and getting extremely close at this point in time. Um, and I, uh, one of the things I, I, I love about IO uh, and also love about Joe being in two campaigns right now is uh, Joe's just seeing it in all different directions. So. Yeah, how do you keep it organized in your, <clears throat> in your mind, all the different campaigns and characters? That's really impressive. <laughs> Luckily, they're so, so different right now. <laughs> they couldn't be more different right now. <laughs> okay, I can imagine too, Joe, for you, like, you're also playing with two different groups of people. So the dynamic of, like, going with that flow has got to be pretty pretty weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's wild. It's interesting. It's fun. I like it a lot. Um, so there are, just to give you a couple of reminders, and feel free to remind me as well if I miss anything, um, but there are several things on your plate currently um and as a crew you can role play this out you can discuss it above board you can do whatever you wish um i mean i think i think an rp discussion would be the most fun at this point but uh yeah uh let's first start with if you guys were to go to an area where you were to plan your next move slash kind of relax a little bit because you've been essentially going back to back to back at this point i wouldn't be surprised if all of your all, all of you were in need of just a little bit of just a rest, just to turn your brain off for a little bit. Uh, where would you mm -hmm. go? Would you return to the tavern? Would you go back to Armstrong's home to just kind of begin to plan out your next move? Where exactly would you head off to? Definitely back to Armstrong's Carter. house. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Probably. Regroup and stuff, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Last time we went to the tavern, we... Uh, got in another fight, so. <laughs> what? I don't. <laughs> I, don't Yo, want, what? I don't want you to think that the tavern is where. I mean, taverns are where brawls happen, but yeah, it's not I like mean, there's. I feel like, there's always going to be like. At this point, the characters themselves would be like, "Yo, things happen when we're at the tavern. Let's go somewhere." <laughs> We've had at least two I'm battles tired. at the ta like on account of the tavern, that's true. and that's where we encountered Iron. Yeah. Iron side, iron side. Yeah, you, oh did, it. Yeah. you did it. Yeah, no, I love <laughs> Laura gets a name like stuck in her head, and it's very hard to get that name out. So I, it I, is. I respect it, it. I respect it. I absolutely <laughs> respect it. Um, <clears throat> so with that, <laughs> chat. She said the thing. <laughs> Shut up, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um so all right at that point you would return back to your home and i was hoping that Wait, hold, you... on. Wait, hold on yeah. sterling and i have to do one important thing oh yes oh that is actually a very good question mm -hmm. i wanted to let you know i wanted to ask about before you depart uh what you mm -hmm. doing with big and ugly up there that you've literally as i recalled uh mauled it to pieces uh mm -hmm. not really getting <laughs> try to dissect the brain it went bad yeah it went badly it went it well i mean i think i think that didn't you all also try to like get like tentacles and teeth or things like that or or did you uh, not do that no, we just went for the brain no. okay 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 i thought so guys listen i this is like hunters the virus throwing you off no 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 <laughs> it's not hunters of io this is literally like three or four different campaigns who i've had to be like make a survival check because they wanted to like maw maw the, the, the creature for parts this is it's been really weird it's been like a reoccurring thing for some reason so this is literally the third or fourth campaign that has been like i'm gonna go ahead and take a knife to it and see what i can get and i'm just like all right so and what a, all the mmos we play where it's like oh loot them skin them it's, it's, 
no lie. It's literally been back to back these past couple of weeks. I have no idea what the obsession has been with everybody. <laughs> just trying to freaking salvage what they can from creatures. So I've, it's got me a little mixed up in my head. I apologize. Um, with, with that said, Brett, can, yes. I use, can I use Immortal to absorb the remaining life force of... of of the being. Yes, you I can. Help myself to his soul. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's 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 different than well, I'm gonna I'm, go I'm ahead the, and grab his teeth. Absolutely. Yeah, look, I'm the shank son of 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 Io, baby. I gotta suck all the souls out for this sword in case you need them for <laughs> something. You know what I mean? Um, first of all, uh, Gerard, are you able to turn up your mic just a little bit? Because I have you on max yeah. volume. I got you. I got you. One sec. Thanks, homie. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do. You're a gamer in my heart. All right, gamers, rise up. How do I sound now? <laughs> oh, man. Now yeah, we're gaming. <laughs> Did somebody now we're gaming. <laughs> now we're gaming. Now we're gaming. I think, <laughs> I think someone... <laughs> I'm so sorry for being, for being wacky today. I th <laughs> someone someone inhaled, and I thought they were impersonating a baby. <laughs> <laughs> rise up, gamers. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm so now sorry. This is gaming. This is gaming. Okay, we're done. We're done. Yeah, Dodger, this is cloud gaming. Dodger will absolutely kill me. So I have to be have to keep going. This is cloud gaming. Oh my god. Sorry. You're welcome. I'll be here all week. Uh, Dodger, I want to say for the record, when you say I hate this, you give off like angry mom vibes. So I just want to be like, all right, we got to wrap this I, up. <laughs> I've, I've noticed I never mean to do it. But I I've know you do. Whenever I make that goof and say that, that you're always like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is. It is. It's just it's a little it's a little angry mom vibe. It feels no. like it. No, no. <laughs> it's just yeah. You said you didn't intend it. It's just something that I've noticed. All right. So at that point in time, uh, yeah, you're going to go ahead and try to absorb the soul of this creature. Cool. Layton, Layton puts the sword or takes a more from his back and like kind of like almost like a uh, sword in the stone style, like gently places it, um, the tip of the sword on the, on the ship to try mm -hmm. to absorb the soul of this beast. All right. Is that a wise idea? <laughs> Layton's eyes start glowing green, and he looks at Sterling and just kind of in this, not demonic voice, but a different voice. I gotta get a voice changer. Um, <laughs> it just kind of goes like, if it's dead, it's dead. <laughs> I'm more worried about it being inside of you. If it has a soul, it's not entirely dead. Ah, it's not inside of it's not inside of me though. It's inside the sword. Isn't that better? <laughs> I I look. I I see a dead body and I must absorb it. That's that's my thing. As the uh, energy of the departed at this point, uh, the, the the time for discussion has has ceased as the soul of the spirit energy of this begins to flood within the sword. And as you grasp onto the hilt, the first thing that you begin to feel and in, in, in you almost feel like the presence of the spirit depart this creature, and a memory flashes over your eyes of the departed. You see two things really quickly at this point. Uh, you see the memories of the pirate that is flooding within you of the life and for a brief moment of the life they experienced. And he, he was being honest. He had a home here at Kreshart. His ship was crashed. It was essentially in dire need of repair. And he arrived at Kreshart, got the repairs he need, met a friendly, you know, met friendly citizens fell in love once with a woman. It didn't work out, but he appreciated the the time that he spent with her. He was in Kreshard for 10 years. He experienced a whole life, 
in Kreshart as a simple fisherman eventually and just retired there. The city had welcomed him warmly. And then the second memory that probes within you from the spirit. Not only did you get his soul, but you also got the energy that was attached to that spirit as well. This just dark energy that's cold to your core. The power of Cosma, essentially, that was always imbued, resting, sleeping, waiting, until something sparked it, something activated, and took over the man's mind. His memories and constant argument of Kreshart. Until it finally, he let go. It took him over upon, uh, upon the ship. Something that he was holding back for a long time as the creature within him surfaced. The Cosma energy that you absorbed, you begin to feel this sort of like, hmm. You can see where it, it originates, where it comes from at this point. Mm. As you look out, as you see a sea of stars essentially over a planet that's misted in a blue energy, a radiant sun off in the distance, and the what appears to be a giant torso of an ancient god of Cosma itself. The Cosma energy has sapped within your sword, but you are uncertain of its influence on your blade. And that is what you feel, and that is what you experience. You're free to share with what you wish. <clears throat> um, I mean, above board, I feel yes. like Leighton has been through so much that, like, none of this really phases him. If right. anything, it's more like it's more like a, well, that's a Tuesday in in Io. Like, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. though, to him, he's not he's not so much emotionally um, jarred so much as it's like he's trying to dis to still to distill down the information that he just got. Mm -hmm. um, especially because uh, in the last episode, everyone got visions except for me uh, of of what the beast showed them before we we murdered them mm -hmm. um so um yeah i think i think uh um leighton kind of gives sterling a look and just kind of mutters i think you were right on that one i should have left them alone and then leighton like kind of kicks one of the tentacles of the uh of the beast and uh kind of gives sterling a motion of like let's let's toss it overboard kind of thing all right you grab it by the head and i'll get it by the legs aye i help lift it <clears throat> and with that you heave the creature over it lets out a, a heavy impact a heavy splash upon the ocean as you see the body slowly sink down to the abyss. Do you feel like yourself? I feel fine, but I saw something. I don't really know what I saw other than just mm. loneliness personified in space. It reminded me a lot of the Space baby. Mm. Leighton kind of, uh, like, takes Immortal off his back and, like, tosses it, like, you know, from side to side, hand to hand, kind of like air fighting. Well, th the blade seems fine. Nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary, but. Feels that the soul I have absorbed. 
It's conscious almost. Like, whenever I ferry men through the, the in their souls to the sword, it's there to aid me, but this one feels omnipresent in a way. The sword feels heavier. Hmm. There might come a day where you absorb a soul that is too much for you to handle. And you become the sword instead of the one wielding the vessel. Layton kind of gives Sterling a look like a like a, yeah, that'll never happen. But also, <laughs> like, yeah, probably will happen. <laughs> it's a complex look. Yeah. It's like a, it's, it's, it's almost like a watch your tongue, old man, but like immediately regretting to even think that. Um, when or if that possibility happens, and I'm talking from experience, make sure to have your friends with you and try your best to heed their advice. Till then, enjoy the trinket. <laughs> enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the trinket <laughs> as if, as if this is a, a toy. Isn't it? Do you think it's your responsibility to ferry these souls? Do you know where they go? But it's, it's, it's all I, it's all I know for the, the last 10 years is what I, it's what I do. I, I, I am, I am the sword. You weren't 10 years ago. And those souls, are you damning them? No, 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 I'm not. You've spoken to them then. I, I, they, they speak to me. I can't communicate to them. They, they, they tell me their, their final thoughts and their words, their hopes and dreams, but I can't communicate to them. They, is that them willingly telling you their thoughts and their dreams, or is it perhaps you stealing them? I, 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 I. It was, it was a debt. It was a debt to be repaid. I, I was cursed. I had to I had to pay the debt. I have to pay the debt. How much is this debt? A hundred, 120 souls. 120 souls. 100. 120 souls. Armstrong, you see at this point... Um... Yeah, you see at this point just uh, Leighton pacing up the deck. Something hasn't done in a while. Oh, now look what you did. You broke Leighton again. <laughs> My apologies. I just... I'm not a big fan of swords that require such a cost. Hey, best not to think about it. Is it? My only worry is that what if one of these days he absorbs something a little bit too strong to hold? <laughs> and you have to put him down. Suppose that is a possibility. Leighton, like, kind of like shoulder checks Shen and, and, uh, everyone on the way in and just tries to get down to the, to the, uh, underside of the ship. Mm -hmm. And then as he's running down the stairs, he trips and falls into a pile of books. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh, you God. trip and fall and you'll hear Ailis go, Oh, come on. I just finally organized them by color. <laughs> I Where did all these books come from? I don't, I don't know. Please don't ask. Wait, are you okay? Luna looks concerned. <laughs> Leighton like gives Luna like a like a dilated like almost like no pupil look of like panic, like just like doesn't does verbally doesn't communicate. Just just like trying to find a place to like vomit or or curl up and just like hide, if you will. Oh gosh, uh, Leighton here, come here. She kind of like tries to move him a little bit and um 
She was helping Ayla stack up books, and there's like a little Aelis corner will... that's... <laughs> oh, sorry. I was gonna say, Ayla's will notice once, once Luna says something, and he'll like push off a few of the books and basically make like a seat. Out of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, Aaron was also down there helping stack books, but she's definitely gonna back up as soon as like she sees Leighton's face. She's like, mm, no. <laughs> Luna kind of guides him over to the the makeshift book seat that Alice made and kind of sits him down. And is like, okay, what? Why don't you just take a load off here, okay? Luna looks over at Alice like with this kind of like I, I don't know what happened. Look, <laughs> yo, what's wrong with him? Uh, I'm not sure. He, I think he was talking to Sterling. Leighton, like, is suddenly, like, um, super warm and just, like, takes off his coat and his bracers and stuff and is trying to, like, he's, like, trying to find the, he, it's, he can't verbalize anything. He's just, like, trying to to find release of this of this uncomfortable feeling in his body he's <sighs> kind of like pacing and like touching the walls and the barrels and the books and he's just trying to find semblance in 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 being normal again I haven't seen him look like this in a long time mm -hmm. you mean he was like this before oh so, when I first met him, and he'll um he'll sort of stand up and try to kind of like almost almost ground Leighton by uh not not like grabbing his arm but kind of touching his arm and trying to make eye contact. Leighton like grabs like at first like Leighton grabs Alice by like the back of the neck, like like a defense mechanism, like fight or flight. And then, like, mm. almost, like, threatening Alice in a way, but, like, suddenly everything just comes to a calm. And the chill and everything just goes away. Leighton, you're all right. What's going on? That's... Sterling... Sterling, he, he he understands more than than I do about this, about the sword, and he just he was just being a curious fellow, and I I went down the rabbit hole with him with your past. I. But it's more, no, it's no longer about the past. It's about the future. I... I absorbed that, that beast's soul, and in it, I saw two beings. The soul of the, of the man we saw back at the bar. And the other... It's like a, an entity for the, the being we saw back at the academy. Hmm. It doesn't have That's control good. over me. It doesn't... I'm not connected to it, but... It's almost like a... Like a poison. I can feel it in my veins. So let me get this straight. We just felled this... Giant... Demon space baby conduit, and you thought it would be a good idea to absorb it? What were you thinking? Leighton gives a slow look towards Kyren. It's the duty of what I do. I absorb souls to send them to the other side. I don't question. I just do. That sounds like a whole lot of taking things on yourself for no reason except for your own pride, huh? Alys will sigh and kind of look between the two of them and say... It's not that I enjoy agreeing with her, but you don't have to use the sword, Leighton. Leighton kind of 
kind of like tries to shrug it off. Just like a, I got, what do you, I got the guy, I got this. Um, you know, since since we defeated the War Master, the sword hasn't had any kind of potency over me. But this was the first time that that I seem to have been lost in it. Well, then maybe you should start thinking about that. You're not a reaper, you're a man. Your value isn't in whether or not you're doing this thing with this sword. So if it's going to affect you, it's going to continue to affect you negatively. Leighton, you don't have to use it. You don't have to be doing this. Because when's the stopping point? Will you ever feel like you've gotten where you want to be with it? Or is this a duty that you've assigned to yourself till the day that you leave this world? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And Leighton like punches a hole through a barrel. We can patch that up with a book. <laughs> <laughs> Leighton like, Leighton like try. Leighton Leighton laughs a little bit, and then he like goes to point at Luna, but realizes the barrel's like on his hand, and like tries to like <laughs> shake it off, but can't. Alice will grab it and try to help him pull it off, and be like, "Honestly, you're a mess with or without the sword. You know that, like good naturedly." <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but how would you learn how to be a mess without me? Yes, I have such a good trainer. <laughs> One day you'll all remember the lessons I've taught you and laugh. Laugh. Laugh for all the weird things I taught you all. Ho, oh, Leighton, I expect you'll be around for another hundred years or so. I'll kind of pat him on the shoulder and be like, Chin up. Everything's going to be all right. And I mean it. You don't have to be doing this. Hi. All right. Leighton gets up, dusts himself off. I need fuel. Looks around, grabs a huge thing of whiskey. Fuel. Pounds it all in one go. <laughs> Slams the bottle on the floor. Rips his hands together. All right. Where are we going, boys? Well, I'm going to continue to do this <laughs> like gesture all <laughs> so you're all free to do whatever you'd like but I caused this mess so I suppose I'll be down here for the rest of my life oh I see you're making a fort for books oh the young imagination <laughs> of a boy ah oh. <laughs> when I was a boy when I was a boy I used to climb these gigantic trees and I'd break the branches and I'd make like a little tree house for myself and you're doing that with books oh Wow. Luna is smiling. Way like, smarter than me. The old Leighton has returned. <laughs> <laughs> She's relieved. <laughs> Kyron's not sure what to make of this mood whiplash. <laughs> a little bit skittish. Thank you. All of you. Hmm. We can build you a book seat in your room if you like. We have <gasps> more than enough. <laughs> Are you saying you can make a throne out of books? Probably could. <laughs> Actually, yes, most likely. <laughs> Aye, we must make Alice a throne of books. Oh. The librarian no. needs a throne. <laughs> no, not, not for me. The idea was that we make one for you. Baker boy. <laughs> no, I don't want one. <laughs> Go down and start helping with the with the with the book of thrones. <laughs> don't listen to anything he's saying. <laughs> like yell up the stairs. <laughs> what, what 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 do you mean B book of thrones? What does that <laughs> Just book go, 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 go make the Book of Thrones. You know what I mean. Uh, Nicholas will peek underneath over the stairs to look down to see the books that have cascaded and flooded through the hallways. His eyes will open wide. You'll hear just kind of like echoing off, like off into the hallway. 
Uh, everything okay down there? <laughs> yep, we're fine. <laughs> I'm 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 supposed to make a book of of throne uh, thrones no, or something. <sighs> he I just had whiskey. <laughs> I think I think he meant a throne of books. But I wasn't sure what he meant by that. <laughs> uh, Nicholas, you know, uh, Leighton could use some. Some nice warm food, I think. Do you think if it's not too much trouble, you might be able to oh, to yes. make him something? Say, yeah. say, no, say no more. Me too. I, I'll go ahead and... And Kyron, yeah. Looks at Kyron and gives a slow nod. But, you know, that's the that's the duty of the chef. As he uh, will over, like step over books at this point in time, like <laughs> doing his best to like not knock over anything that's being pushed over. Um, you know, oh, like... Um... Gracefully, by the way, gracefully. Oh, at oh one my God. He's a nat 20 grace. Yeah, at, at we one... We all stop what we're doing and watch. He's like it, a cat. Yeah, at one, at, at one point in time, he will literally just jump over at that point. And just uh, and yeah, he'll just jump over the books, and like yeah, like a like a like a graceful flip at that's at, at some point in time, you know. So uh, yeah, that's exactly what he does. <laughs> and then he goes over to the uh, the kitchen area, and oh, look uh, at that. dinner and a show. <laughs> begins to <laughs> yeah, begins begins to begins to work. And yeah, so uh, I believe there was some lobster left, but I think for this one, he's just going to make you just a very basic stew out of like potatoes, vegetables, uh, you know, just things that actually like are well preserved at the time. So or things that that stay preserved for long periods of time, uh, just going to make an app, just make an actual stew. So and then, yeah, he begins cooking the soup, getting the spices that are there and yeah, it gets to work. It'll take some time, but we'll make a, f a very filling stew. Leighton kind of comes... Oh, oh go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Luna uh, sees one of the books kind of looks a little bit like a cookbook, like the way that it's bound and stuff like that. And so she quickly grabs it and runs over and says, Nicholas, do you ever write down your recipes? Mm -hmm. You know, like if you... I don't know, like lists of ingredients that you need or recipes that you want to remember for later? Uh, his his face turns a little red at that question as he looks down kind of like slowly with like a wooden wooden spoon, uh, stirring at the soup, adding a pinch of salt. He, he'll kind of like lift the, 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 uh, the spoon up, gently tap his finger on top of the liquid so as to not touch the soup. And he'll get a little... He'll... Take, take a little taste of it, nod and puts it down and he he'll, lems. Ju he'll just say he <laughs> <laughs> like he, a cat, he, like he a cat. Lemmed it, yeah. Yeah, like he a cat. It. Yeah, it's yeah, weird yeah, that yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, but yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> um, so he puts the spoon back and he'll look over at you and just like I um I don't really I don't really do do recipes um. He stirs it a little bit. I just kind of go off of feeling. Hmm. Okay. I was just wondering, because I found this book here, and I didn't know if you would want it or not. It's just, um, but yeah, I can put it back. Uh, Nicholas uh, immediately turns over and grabs the book. <laughs> <laughs> This is a. You don't have uh, to use it. You can just, you know, use it to. No, like, no, no. Uh, it's, decoration. This, no, no. It's it's. Uh, oh, uh, yes. I think that that it'll look good right here, and I'll just <laughs> clean the book right up against the wall and be like, "This is a. Uh, this is a, a a beautiful gift, L Luna. Thank you." Mm. Luna kind of senses a little bit of why he might be funny about it, so she, she just says, "I." One of the things that I did with one of my journals, I would keep things like feathers from birds that I really liked, and I would kind of tape them into the book or um, like a plant that I'd like or some, some, you know, I just kind of kept it as a scrapbook. So, yeah, feel free to use it for whatever you like. Um, he, he, he blushes a little bit and then he pauses and then looks over at you. <laughs> okay, go ahead and make an insight check. <laughs> <laughs> 
Me make it? Oh, he make it. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> isn't entirely certain what you're saying, but he will just stutter out of his, his breath and just be like, I, 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 I know how to read, Luna. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I meant, um, like, if, um, because I know some artists, you know, artistic people, they like to do things from the heart, and they don't write it down. Like, one of my friends, um, she kept everything in her head, you know? Uh, she used to sing a lot and play instruments, and, and she would just do everything completely by memory, so... Um, what I meant is, if if it's not of practical use in that sense, that's okay too. Oh, and um, he he looks forward, <laughs> feeling very bashful that he thought he had to correct you about something, and he goes, uh, "Oh well, uh, thank you. I'm sure I could like uh, put like uh, spices or something in the book." And then he shakes his head because that was the stupidest thing he could have said at that point, <laughs> and he's just like, uh, "But uh, you know." <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, thank you. This is still a, a very good gift, and I uh, appreciate that. And he stirs the, he stirs the soup a little faster than he normally would. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Luna kind of like runs off. <laughs> Nicholas mutters under his breath, blew it. It blew it. <laughs> um, Brett, remind me, there's, there's three levels to this ship, right? That there's is like the, the top deck. There's the like living quarters and then there's storage, yeah. Yes, that is correct. I think Alice would go down into the storage area and see if there is room for bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> what if we read bookshelves out of books? Um, what if it's just like, oh wow, that just good confusing. Uh, there are there are a bunch of old crates that are currently in, not in use, which will allow uh, for the room of bookshelves. Are you converting the downstairs area into a library? <laughs> into a library. <laughs> Look, if no one stops him, yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. All right. You could get Wood Gnome to build bookshelves. I already have Wood Gnome building my rotating book viewer. <laughs> you know, when he's not sleeping in your mm -hmm. bed. Uh, or hiding in your room, <laughs> which he absolutely is at this point. Why do I put up with this? <laughs> <laughs> Just going to go ahead and, and make make... Make a I didn't thing. think there actually would be. I, I googled bookshelves made of books, and there actually <laughs> someone actually <laughs> made these. Yo, that first oh one actually was good, though. That's true. Um, hold on one second. My food's here. I'll be right back. I'll leave you on mute. Oh, wait, the second one has like cinder blocks trash. in it. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Why are the why is the shelf made of books, and then inside it's of the shelf, shelf is cinder blocks? <laughs> what the fuck? It's for builders. To read. <laughs> I had to read tricks. That was one of the hardest roll piece sessions ever for the sake of the fact that chat was going in so hard on the gamer vape memes that like <laughs> that was trying to tell me what was going on and I was laughing my ass off. I couldn't focus. I had to just like try my best to just like, I had to mute like, myself so I wouldn't accidentally chuckle because I was just like, every time something popped up, I was like, gifting to Cheeto is gifting I'm, to you know, gamers. I'm going to have to go and rewatch that whole section because um, I was uh, I'm just back. like, my, my attention is <laughs> so split. I'm so sorry. I'm back. It was, it was hysterical. It was so funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, what I was, was just... happening? Because I really wasn't paying attention, you know. Oh, nothing. Dude. Sorry about it. <laughs> when you get a chance, watch the VOD. The the chat was like during you and me talking, Brent, the chat was just going off about on the gamer vape memes. Oh, and it God was really damn. it made it so hard to focus. Oh, <laughs> but every no. time someone would like gift a sub, they'd be like yeah, it would be like a gamer name or some kind of reference. Or it, it was funny. It was a it was a serious <laughs> moment. And, oh, oh, no. But but to chat credit, they were hilarious. Well, I'm legitimately gonna have to like go back and rewatch that part. I'm sorry. Well, Masse was oh. cracking me up. I was <laughs> because it was like out of nowhere, and then I see it pop up. I'm like, no, and I mute myself so I can laugh. Hey, <laughs> hey, what? Well, 
whatever. I'm 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 here for your entertainment one way or another, so it's all good. <laughs> while 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 Brett's eating, uh, we're all gonna be in D and D jail. <laughs> no, no D no hey no D and D jail. You play it however you want to. There's no there's no rules or requirements. Um, no, I'm still I'm still good, but unless you want to say something. I, I was going to say, I was going to continue this RP with Sterling real quick. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, absolutely. You, you guys Layton, you guys do whatever you want. <laughs> Layton does like a little like shitty like jog up to the top of the deck here with Sterling. And uh, Layton reaches behind uh, his waist and pulls out a water jug and uh, <clears throat> hands it to Sterling. Oh, appreciate that. He takes it. I, uh... I'm sorry for my reaction that just took place. I, uh... Got a little bit lost in my thoughts and... Went to a dark place, but... I appreciate your patience and... And, and putting up with it. There's nothing to apologize for. It's understandable. Besides, I'm new to the crew. I spoke out of turn. No, 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 no. It's nothing like that by any means. I just, um... You know, the, so much has happened since I've joined this crew, and, you know, this is my family, and I've kind of forgotten what it's like to have one. I think I tend to, when I go down to the darkest place, I I th immediately think about the boy, and how I need to be here for as long as I can. And the sword, for what it's worth, well, it doesn't give me true power in a way that man would want from it. I feel responsible for it like I do for the rest of the people here. It doesn't control me, but sometimes, sometimes, there's that itch. And, uh, I think you and I just, you bringing it up and talking it out to me just kind of, I gave in when I shouldn't have. I understand. Once this is all over, I may suggest one thing. Mm. Rid yourself of the sword. Eventually. I... I have no problem with that. I just don't want anyone else to take the sword. There are ways to destroy items like that. In due time. Leighton kind of chuckles. <laughs> the sword's name is Immortal. I'm pretty sure this thing can't be defeated. I've heard God say the same thing. Shit! Shit! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Sorry. That got me. That was a good line. <laughs> Layton kind of like, Layton kind of looks at, at Sterling like, are you telling me that you've defeated a god? I mean, it referred to itself as such. <laughs> he like drunkenly leans over to the to the arm of where uh, Armstrong is uh, on the wheel and just kind of goes, "The old man here has defeated a god, Armstrong. What do you think of that?" <laughs> oh, has he now? <laughs> well, there's hope for us yet. I. Know. We have a god killer who turns into an ape on our side. Nothing, nothing will take down the misdemeanor. I had some very, very good help. But I will say that I was rather useful. I. Well. Anyway, soon, we should do the same with this um, space baby, as you poetically call it. Hmm. Face baby. Captain, I, that thing's been eaten away at me. Captain, I don't know about you, but I think it's time for us to retreat and con seriously consider a plan for this space baby. I am having trouble focusing on anything else while this thing's still floating around, making goblins do its bidding and whatnot. I and turning men into gigantic tentacle creatures, who we defeated, by the way. 
leaning like <laughs> Layton's like leaning and talking trash to like the sinking corpse to the ground. Oh, I mean, it's long, it's long gone, and also like off way off in the distance. Like it's already like you've passed on by it, but the sentiment is there. Absolutely, <laughs> the sentiment. The scent doesn't matter. It's more yeah, like it's more the sentiment. The, he, yeah, he's with the fishes. Is what he's getting at. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes, at that point, I think Sterling, your communication with Leighton, and it's really uh, also intri- interesting to you how even 500 years in the future from when you did petrify, um, how some things have just remained the same with similar mm-hmm. conflicts that you're able to give a perspective to ouch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and with that as, as the thoughts that follow um a, a tiredness falls over you i think uh, like a natural one oh yeah like a natural one like okay. uh like a like no 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 no, no. this yeah, this, this, this isn't this isn't about this, to, and then you drop unconscious <laughs> this is, is thank you joe to, uh, yeah, yeah thank to you pick joe up an old play. man right now what's the no, deal no 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 um no a tiredness as like a like a like a need for slumber a need for a rest you just want everybody to walk through my books. I see what's going on here. You want everybody to in on the goof. <laughs> Armstrong, there seems to you as you you pilot. The <laughs> Armstrong, ship, you d- simply you... must go down and find wood. Yeah, you feel that there might be a, a leak and must investigate because it's your. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if Armstrong had seen that yet. No, he hasn't. He's been piloting the oh, ship. That's, that's amazing. He kind of just feel. I mean, you definitely feel something is like kind of amiss with the ship because you've been so connected with the misdemeanor for so long. Um, right. Like something, something there's is definitely of off. Suddenly, yeah, yeah there's. Weird yeah, it's like you're you're having a little bit of trouble keeping the ship on balance, and it doesn't seem to be going at the same pace. Even though you feel that the wind is should be taking you a certain. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot happening that you're 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 uh, questioning at this point. Captain, I'm uh, going to retire for the night. Or the day. Either way, I'll have a Aye. rest. Get some rest, you've earned it. Aye, sleep well. And if you do go after this space, baby, you have uh, you have my allegiance in that. Whatever you decide to do next. Aye, Aye, well, it's much appreciated. Ben's going to head down. Okay. Yo, I love Sterling. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Sterling's got a lot <laughs> of so ex- good. Sterling, well, I mean, you've been playing Sterling for over two years now, Joe. Yes. So. Although I was petrified so from him so for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, if no one else Thank is you, doing you. anything of RP. Oh, just hiding books in the bottom of the ship. <laughs> Yeah, Luna's Island just books. helping stack stuff. I like to think that... Also helping with varying degrees of uh, helpfulness. Can like Luna to attempt like... to make stuff? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go, you go. Oh, can Luna attempt to make furniture with the books with her, like, woodworking skill? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, you may attempt so. It's definitely going to be different, but... <laughs> I would say I would I would say the DC would be 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 increased a little bit, but yeah, you may you may attempt so if you so wish. Okay, maybe I'll start trying to make a book bookshelf. Hmm. Or or th- should I make the throne right. <laughs> or the book bookshelf? Yeah, you can make the throne. Okay, I'll do that. I'll try to we make toilet room. paper for years now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I no, imagine cool. when Sterling goes down, because he's only been on the ship for a couple of days, that he doesn't look at the books as like, this is a new edition. He thinks he's <laughs> just got them out of storage. So I think he'd pick up one of the books, go to bed, open it and be like, it's empty. <laughs> go and pick up another one. Going, <laughs> be super confused before going to bed with that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. As you begin to work <laughs> on the books... Like, it just yeah. doesn't work. 
<laughs> I, uh, I'll, I will definitely give you the results after that rolled because that'll be several hours of you attempting it. But you can already tell oh, you've just you've just ruined a bunch of books, like three years worth of books, just trying to make this throne. And then when you finally <laughs> sit down, just the binding, it just kind of like breaks apart. The paper begins to spill out and it just completely falls apart, ruining the books. <laughs> Oh, we take 500 like damage, man. piercing damage from the. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. The paper cut is lethal. Uh... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm trying to do something here real quick. Huh? Huh? Yes. All right, so you you <laughs> you'll be working on a throne, and Sterling, you will slumber. Mm -hmm. And while you slumber, you shall read. I want him to just leave it there. While you slumber, you'll dream. <laughs> you'll dream. Anyway. Arriving uh, back. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, <laughs> uh, if you think that I was going to leave it there, you are sorely mistaken. Sterling. Is this fair? You slept before. You definitely haven't been... Sleep's been, I, I feel like for Sterling, you sleep. sleep, right? No, 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 no nothing like that. St for uh, Sterling, mm -hmm. um, this is probably your second time, I think, that you've been asleep since, since your, mm -hmm. since your, your, yeah, since your reawakening, since your unpetrification. You've been kind of in this like strange stasis like state. So sleep has been a little weird for you, I would say. Your first evening would be just a lot of just rocking around, a little unsettled. Trying to get mm -hmm. back into sleeping is weird. And then you sleep once again, and the events and visions of your past just begin to fade into existence. One of the last things you recall and remember that had made the most impact to you, that life-changing day, as you and your former party face off against the void, the image itself as this being of unlimited power, this self-proclaimed god of nothing, and its final pleas to you, wishing to live one more time before you and your party wipe out the void. You just feel the impact and the wind of, the, of its explosion as a vigilant and violent light breaks forth from the creature and enveloping you. You recall those final moments that had probably, I would, I would say, and you can correct me on this, the strongest impact of your entire life that just, in some ways, I would imagine broke your spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I won't correct me. As you envelop yourself within that light, within your party, you gather around to know that in the end, well, to gather around that you knew that this was going to be the end. Fate fulfilled, div and void, destroyed, humanity freed from their godlike oppressors. You would turn over to everyone, but then you would turn over to Wazy. 
what would have been you 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 knew you were about to die at this point that you all were about mm -hmm. to perish that this was absolutely the end in a sort of role play like scenario sterling as you go off and dream what would you have said to your party and he knows what he knows now right no, this is a, a, a kind of go back into the mind of Sterling before he was about to leave. Like, go back to the mind of Sterling. Like, this is you of that moment. And he knows he's about to leave. No, he doesn't. Not yet. Oh, okay. I remember, I actually remember exactly what happened at the end here. Mm hmm. Uh, do you, since you were Wazy Dodger, do you yeah. want to role play that moment? Well, in the. In the actual moment, Wazy Wazy brought everybody into a hug, uh, so that we could all die in a hug, and then Sterling vanished, mm -hmm. and the three of us died without him. And so you just we didn't say anything. Yeah, I think I think Wazy. The last thing you said was, "Well, <laughs> let's come on in together," you know, in typical Wazy fashion. Yeah. Well, it's just like, you know, if this is it, at least we're doing this together. And Sterling... We did it. Yeah. We won. All right, well, bring it in. <laughs> and Wazy, and, and you just see everyone just kind of gather up into a into a very just like close embrace. The in, The final fight of the Void as you look around until fate always the cruel mistress Sterling you feel something that just doesn't want to let you go as mm. at that point you I don't think I ever asked you this because we were definitely in a high stress scenario but maybe this is a good time to dig into that what was Sterling's thoughts as he was being ripped away from his friends? You saw everyone be just vanish right before your eyes as if you were just pulled back. I think kind of immense denial to begin with, thinking like maybe this was just, maybe he just got knocked out during the fight. Maybe this bit was the dream mm -hmm. and this didn't happen. And then just overwhelming regret they didn't get to say anything that he wanted to say and at that point Sterling you remember the recall you remember feeling yourself just getting pulled away as your yeah, as your friends just fade off into the light and it is at that point that you would suddenly wake up in a sweat He's going to sit up in his bed, put his legs over the side and kind of just push his head into his hands and start rubbing his temples. And I guess he'll leave his room to see if anyone else is awake, kind of just seeking company. It's still midday. I think it's fair to say that you would have been napping. At that point, as you begin to arrive mm -hmm. back to the port of Kreshart, or actually no, back to Armstrong's house, the ship begins to sail uh, sail back. You begin to see the, the landfall if you're looking out one of the portholes. So I think everyone's still working on their thing. The cold sea, the, the, the nice chilling sea breeze just sort of brushes through the ship. You would probably at that point see Nicholas still finishing his stew. If you're actually in the hallway, Nick Nicholas will turn over to you with a, a nod and just be like, oh, oh the uh, the food's all almost ready. You would stare off into the halls, the books just cascading through still. Uh, Alice kind of like crouched over, I'd imagine, still trying to, to organize things. Uh, I yeah, would imagine. If, if Alice, if Alis saw him come out of his room and talk to Nicholas a little bit on his next, like, walk back to the stairs <laughs> to bring more books down, he would um, kind of offhandedly say, oh, I, 
somehow magicked up like 3,000 books. If I recall correctly, you write a lot, so if you want any of them, feel free. Impressive. Uh, how did you manage that? I wish I knew. What do you mean? It, I was sitting in there, I was writing something, and I thought to myself, it would be a lot easier if I had more books to keep all of the information organized. And then suddenly I was conjuring books, uh, hundreds and then thousands of books, and now, now I'm hiding them. So if you could not mention this to Armstrong, that would be wonderful. He'll just go down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna find them eventually. Uh, not today. Tyron, what are you doing? She's She's been helping Alice periodically. Sometimes she's being helpful, sometimes she's just watching them work, but... Uh, the heart is there. She kind of, sort of ah. wants to be helpful. <laughs> As you see this halfling carrying like a stack of books, clear half the size of that Alis is moving around. <laughs> um, I think Sterling would probably get a table and, or maybe maybe a chest. Mm -hmm. or something, a container of some kind, start filling it with the books, and then animate the container and help mm -hmm. by floating down many more books. You'd probably fill, like, a crate up with the books and then assist with that, I would imagine, at that point, continuing to try and get the books. It's definitely going to take some impact. Meanwhile, as you do so, off across the other side of the kitchen, you'll see Luna uh, there <laughs> trying to do <laughs> something with nails as if this was a, a, a some sort of... Like, like, as if this was some sort of woodcraft, she just begins slamming the mallet and the nail against the books, trying to, like, make the binding of a <laughs> some sort of chair and just <laughs> destroying books, uh, endless amounts of books in the process as she continues <laughs> to do that. At one point, you would probably think, you'd probably think Luna just, like, would control water, like, over the books and then use, like, her cold affinity to try and, like, freeze them together. It just ruins more books. It's, it's, it's... A desperate attempt uh, to create something wonderful, while uh, in the <laughs> while in the meanwhile uh, being a force of destruction to the bindings. Uh, I think Stone would also take the nicest looking one he can, and uh, and pop it into his like satchel to go mm. into his room, or pop it into his room. Yeah. Also, any books that you guys grab, you're free to describe any way you wish, because there is literally a so many books at this point. You'll you will find one of your desire and look uh, if you ever want it for art in the future or anything like that. Too bad mm -hmm. Tyron hates books. <laughs> I can't eat this. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> Luna saved one that had. She actually took a few. Uh, one that has like a really neat looking dragon pattern on it. And it's like got kind of gold coloring and metal work on the front. And she mm -hmm. took one that looks like a tree that's got really intricate roots. And so she didn't destroy all the books. <laughs> okay. Um, with that, if there's some, if, if there's nothing else anyone wants to share, we will have the ship oh. arrive at Armstrong's house. So, <laughs> and of course, at that point, you would all remember and recall the last thing that was being assembled and built over at the House of Armstrong as its constant construction creation comes into view. Oh, the, gosh. The house itself <laughs> begins to, just as you see these creatures continue to assemble metal. You were instructed, Armstrong, not to uh, damage the house, so they are, of course, building around it at this point by your, requ by your request. Uh, when you finally arrive... Uh, Armstrong, Leighton, whatever you're doing, you just kind of see as these creatures begin to assemble everything here. 
just about forgotten we'd agreed to this. I didn't think they'd replace the house with a... Well, whatever the hell this thing is. Ah, greetings! You stay out of this! <laughs> I forgot mm -hmm. about this. We've kept your house intact as you requested. Hey, I'll keep you intact. What did you build here? We need to keep the portal defended from invaders. The Astral Academy must be protected. So let me get this straight. This is just a... a, 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 a wall to protect this portal? Oh, uh, silly flesh sack. No, 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 no. We're almost done with this. But it will require more time. This is incomplete currently. Let me be clear. No one's called me flesh sack since my father. Don't do it again, okay, you robot scum? Uh, updating your profile. Flesh sack removed from my vernacular. Thank you. You will call me Captain Layton Beard Throne. Mm -hmm. Affirmative. Great. Are you guys done yet? <laughs> no. We still have much more construction to do. How much more time do you need? As much time as, as it takes. I'd imagine another week or so. It shouldn't disturb the house or any of your rest or anything like that. Layton looks at Armstrong. Whatever you say, Captain. Let's just go inside. I'm about to lose my damn mind. <laughs> oh, Brad, I don't think I'm on the map yet. Oh, you're not. That's right. This is, uh, <laughs> I apologize. New territory. This is new territory for you. Uh, <laughs> Sterling, you would see these tiny uh, creatures have been building a small metal fort around a what appears mm -hmm. to be a makeshift wooden ho house. I mean, I guess to be fair, at least it's well defended. Uh, you say well defended, but I wonder what those little creatures have for weapons. I oh, defended. Now. I don't exactly trust the things. I. Karen's gonna lay down on the floor. Classic. <laughs> Classic, Karen. <laughs> Um, here we go. I think this is a fair sound for these creatures as they continue to assemble a metallic fort building around your house. You see one with what appears to be a metallic, a metallic eye patch just kind of begins walking up. I meet ye. As he looks up over to you. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. Layton, like, gets up off the floor and just, like, jaw dropped, starts slowly approaching this thing. I'm the foreman of this project. I have been assembled to be more comfortable with you, Pyrus. Yar. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> How much longer is this all going to take? Eh, probably a week or two. But we'll make Get sure it. you're kept comfortable. Uh, what do we call you again? Ah, uh, you can call me Captain Duotrone. I'm the foreman yeah. of this operation. Arr. Okay, I'm going to call you Captain Duo. Ah, that is acceptable, Yar. Great. Captain Duo, what are you trying to protect from the portal being destroyed? Is there a, a person, a, a group of individuals, more pirates? Yar, the Astral Academy has been under many threats, Yar. All right, that was a very non-answer. I mean, is there something specific? Is there, it, especially here in Crash Art, is there a... A kraken, or a, a an undead pirate, or something. Processing the information, Yar. You, you know, you don't have to say Yar 
at the end of every sentence. That's not what pirates do. Oh, this was established to make you feel more comfortable around us, Yar. Aye, well, you don't... Now I feel uncomfortable, Yar. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> hmm. Processing your command? <laughs> I can correct this in the future. The ending term Yar shall not be used in future conversation. Oh, yar. no, I... I, I, I... <laughs> yar. <laughs> Uh, you you can use yar, just you don't need to say it all the time. Like, Processing. It... Okay. Confirms. Yar will be used fifty percent of the time. Aye, ah, there you. That's you know what? That's fine. Yar. That damn it. <laughs> Layton like just kind of gets frustrated because he's now he's saying yar all the time. To answer your question, I scanned my database. And I determined the greatest threat here, over on the branch of Io, is an organization of wizards that called themselves the Exodus Academy, or the Arcane Academy. Yar. Wasn't th those- those were the folks that, uh, that tried to invade the Astral Academy, correct? That is correct. Those are the folks that tried to and failed. However, we believe they are capable of finding other portals around Io. It's important that we fortify the area so they do not break through. We are uncertain of their objectives, but it is imperative that they do not get to the Astral Academy. Kyan wrinkles her nose a bit. Uh, Aelis, uh, how do yep. you respond hearing that? <laughs> Aelis looks real. Is Luna here? Did everybody else like come in or uh, no? Uh, one second, Luna. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? I think I'm just like trying to avoid the robots because they freak me out a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you're just okay. like staying so aboard. Luna or... is not here for him to make eye contact with. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alis is like listening but has a very perturbed look on his face hey are these robots gonna be gone when you guys finish this because uh this is pretty obnoxious while we apologize for the inconvenience we need some of us to stay here to maintain the portal's integrity as well as make sure the fortress is well fortified Yar. Can't you just pop by like once a week or something? Well, that would assume we'd have to give you the responsibility. And quite frankly, we don't believe you have the intelligence or knowledge to handle the technology. I'm going to smash this thing. <laughs> You're my guest. So, once Osmakara's dealt with, will you be out of our hair? Absolutely not. It is the inevitable's programming to make sure that the Astro Academy is always protected. Unless the portal would be dismantled. Which I suppose, after Kafkakara has been dealt with, that would be entirely up to you, Yar. Uh, well, this was a nice place to live, but I think it's time to move. <laughs> <laughs> um... Could we have a moment alone, please? Like, processing. Ah, uh, yes. We've also upgraded our programming to allow you alone time. The Captain last, Duo. The last, the last entity that requested alone to be alone, and we did not grant to them, burned down a section of the academy. But since this is your home, uh we are free to give you the privacy that you require. Yar. Captain Duo, we appreciate your kindness. Uh, you know, as as a captain, captain the captain, uh, I think you you might need a little bit something for your uh, crewmates to respect you. So, Leighton leans over and pulls out a hat from his jacket and from puts his it on the captain's jacket head. of hats. How many hats do you have? Well, it's a magic item that he has, so where he has hundreds of hats within. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Incredible. Yeah. There you go. Now, now I accept you as a captain. Thank you 
very much. Layton kind of comes in. I just really wanted to see uh, the robot wear a hat. <laughs> uh, Captain Duo looks up to the hat that is currently uh, resting upon his head and will process for a moment. While this gift was unnecessary, this is acceptable. I shall be sure to wear this for you in the hopes that it will continue to make you comfortable while we continue work around this area. Thank you again. I thank you. Thank you, Captain Do, and remember, don't lose the hat. It's very important. I will defend the hat with my life, Yar. I, Yar. <laughs> and he will walk off and continue building. Gods are insufferable. Okay, so I, I know that they want to. Us... Okay. <laughs> Um, Aelis would be saying, I know that they want us to go here or there and do this and that, but obviously they need more manpower. They wouldn't be coming to us all the time. So I think that we should go to the Academy, to, to the Arcane Academy. Tyrant slams the door. <laughs> 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 Look, they've made it clear that they don't have nearly enough people involved with helping with this thing. And we have no information, like he just said. Why did the Academy attack that day? Surely they don't realize the current stakes, or they would be helping with this. It's literally a school for training mages to be used in battle. They have well enough firepower with just professors alone. And honestly, I think Luna would benefit from the chance to speak with Mylira. And Leighton has been beating himself up over how that fight went, and, well, they haven't extensive library they might have information we can use with the scrum situation uh, i see what this is you just want to go but the librarian no. wants to go check on her peasants let's go we got to go to the library i think Alice not... is right luna kind of like turns over and I, I think it might be a good idea i mean with all the information we're trying to collect and and yeah i i wonder if i spoke with me lira because you know we didn't have that interaction since we apparently went back in time maybe it would be easier to speak with her now so I I'd be down to go hey let's we'll look at Armstrong I I was thinking the scrum situation is something that needs solving sooner rather than later so we can then address the other situation And, you know, side benefit is if the entire academy starts fighting the space baby, there will be a bit less pressure on our shoulders. Might be nice. Kyron looks very hesitant. She She's not too happy about the thought of going back. Layton looks over at Shen, gives him a nod. Mm. We made a promise to help Shen if he helped us out. Pirate always keeps his promise. Pirate's code. We go. Mm. So, where exactly is this location? Shen would look over to Aelis. Um, Aelis would describe in you... like in what direction because yeah. uh because on i think day one of the misdemeanor i did a really good check to figure out if i knew exactly how to get back from here and i do so <laughs> yeah yeah um so uh yes as you do recall using the uh, like the power of the wind to pull you... out one of four books that he's now carrying in his pockets <laughs> just like start drawing out like kind of a vague map to show like where uh the academy is in relation to where we are yeah, so I, I would say at that point in time, um, you would, it's over to the northwest and it's going to take probably about a, a month to a month and a half's worth of travel uh, to get there via ship, uh, including sailing uh, through, give me one second, please. Do I still have that? I believe I don't. You will need to the the terrifying part of this is you have to sail through a storm pattern 
um, that rips through the uh, one side of Io. Um, fortunately, a lot of ships have been made uh, to be able to sail through this storm pattern recently. The misdemeanor being an older ship. However, Armstrong, you believe that you will be able to have a, 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 a better go of it, essentially. Uh, simply because, well, <laughs> your ship has received a lot of sturdy upgrades thanks to you, <laughs> thanks to Ironside. So the mm -hmm. the constitution of it should be able to do it. The uh, yes, the uh, serpent smile. That's what I thought I called it. You know, the serpent smile is this just giant storm pattern that people have to consistently go through if they want to get over to the western part of the map of Io. So with that. You'll be able to go through and uh, be able to do that. Yeah, uh, as Alus is like drawing out this map, Armstrong's like looking at at the route, and his eyes just kind of like light up because he realizes <laughs> like this is a hell of voyage, and he's just like, "Oh, it's been a long time since I've gone on a proper sea voyage, storms and all." All right, we'll, we'll calm down. We will have to plan out, you know, specific places to stop and make sure that we have everything that we need. And, you know, he'll like start, you know, being a fuddy duddy. Mm -hmm. I hoist the sails, grab the supplies. <laughs> I am ready with you whenever you want, Armstrong. That's my lad, first mate Layton. I knew you'd be on board. That co co captain Layton. And they like he like goes for like the bro the bro arm handshake. Wow, is this arm drag just like slowly like, like sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple of things of note here. So to lock in your decision, um, because I said there was a lot of options, uh, but it sounds like this is the option that you might be going through. Um, you will be sailing over uh, to the Astral Academy, or not the Astral Academy, the Arcane Academy, the Exus Academy, um, up in the northern western section, or sorry, uh, northwest, about a month, month and a half so, uh, northwest. This will involve you sailing through a very dangerous storm pattern known as the Serpent Smile. The Serpent Smile itself, while ships have become better constructed, uh, and iron, and you know, um, iron sides able to be able to continue to the iron sides upgrades essentially are able to continue to um would be able to assist you through that process the serpent smile is a very dangerous storm location of a constant barrage of storms with it it, it never lets up it is literally the storm pattern that tears through the uh the the oceans of io um and for a very long time, people were unable to break through it with very minimum there. So it'll be a dangerous journey um, that may destroy the ship and may cost your very lives. As you have, I gone through the serpent's smile. Is that what you yeah, said it was? Yeah, the serpent smile. Uh, you have Armstrong with your rickety old ship, with just the moxie of your sailing, uh, but. <laughs> you barely survived like it, it was something i think we talked about this as well it was something that just shook you up to your core going through okay, that yeah i remember this. yep i remember yep. this yeah this route like if we're making you know stops at ports along the way mm -hmm. uh would there be like you know familiar familiar ports possibly like so friends or allies? so crest Art is that stop is the thing it would be a very vigorous journey through the serpent smile and then you would arrive over to over over to uh the the port side of brisbane where then you'll be able to journey through there uh through the ishtar continent uh over to the northern mountainous sections where the arcane academy the exodus academy is located so we're looking at like a month at sea no stops uh that is correct sick <laughs> uh, the serpent smile for the most part is also very uncharted because of how stormy it is uh, so while 
obviously many sailors would have already have direct routes of how to cross through as fast as possible with minimum sh uh, damage to their ship um if you do somehow venture off course or try to do some risky sailing to try and get there faster uh you may also discover undiscoverable things that have never been discovered in io before it's a very uncharted area of sea that is just covered in storm oh sounds like you don't want us to go on this adventure brett uh, i am i am letting you know the knowledge of what it is you are free to do as you wish you do feel with ironsides ships it is definitely possible um but it will have its dangers is there anything we can do to make it less dangerous? Oh, sure. Like, so how far oh. can I, can I <laughs> ask you a question? Please. You said that we are behind on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Do we have any gauge of like how much time we have before, before baby shit starts happening? Uh, once you arrive at the academy, uh, baby shit will s probably start happening. Okay. I I also have a question. Yes. So I know I know that uh, once upon a time a while back we had talked about like Kyron like went through some troublesome waters. Like would she have known what the serpent smile is or no etc. Okay. Okay. You, you, from where you originated from, you would not have crossed through the Serpent Smile. Okay. The Serpent Smile actually separates the continents of Kathos over to the east and Ishtar over to the west, which are some of the bigger power plays. Well, Ishtar, mm -hmm. uh, Kathos, and the Kingdom of Asmodia over to the southeast. Mm, okay. So, um... Kreshart is the the giant port city, and the reason why it it has it is a well established city is because it's the stopping point between all these continents, where trade ships and the like are able to stop by, and is also why Ironside was so interested in keeping this as a port because at that point he gets control of the rates, controls of what comes in, and has essentially a lot of influence over all the kingdoms of of Io as far as their naval trade goes. Is this a trip that it's mandatory that we take the ship? Because I was just thinking about how Luna got from the Academy to here over time. Um, and yeah, I was just kind of curious because I had an idea of one form of travel, but I don't know if that's an option for us. Uh, if it was a kite-based system, you would have never survived the Serpent Smile. You probably would have arrived here at some point on ship. Mm-hmm. And it probably, if if you, since you were from Ishtar, you would actually recall the Serpent's Smile. Um, whatever way you took to get over here, it was perilous, extremely dangerous, and you almost didn't survive. Okay. Hey, Brett. Yes. That uh, shady kobold bitch, uh, didn't you <laughs> say not to look into Esmodia? Uh, yep. <laughs> Cool, just making sure. Yep. He sure did. He sure has heck did. <laughs> so we're going to be looking for those books. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I have a thought, though. Um, hmm. So we have a portal here. Would the Astral have a portal to the Academy? That, from what... Into? Uh, so, right? from what from what you remembered the only portals that were open from the academy were forcibly open from the academy as you recall from that battle when you were facing off against the day mancers and malira um and then you prompt then the mages promptly sealed those up because those were portals that were created by the academy for the specific well you're not really sure of motivation but uh that was specifically hostile style invasion oh, okay. style so there is no portal that the astral academy has created to get to the exodus academy but you are free to speak to the inevitable uh if you want to see if they, he has or it has any other portals open i 
I mean... Hmm. <laughs> well, it's a thought. <laughs> yeah, like portal hopping. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, we just don't know what portals are there, but the possibility of one being closer is probable. The yeah. the problem is we would have to leave the ship behind, which I don't think the captains are going to do. So, sure. I could I I could tell you because of your close ties with the inevitable as well as anyone that is fighting, um the portals that you would have access to uh would be let me go ahead and, and ponder on this. Uh, yes, so the portals you have ac you would have access to would be this portal, obviously. Uh, there is a portal in Kathos that is specifically specifically lo located under the earth, so it would be underground is where that portal is located under Kathos. Um, okay. So you would be underground, That's but that's completely something in an opposite direction. And the closest portal to the Arcane Academy would be in the Ishtar Highlands, uh, Southern Ishtar, a.k.a. Goblin Land. Goblin Town. <laughs> God damn. Okay. That would be your only portal to bypass the Serpent Smile. You would not have a ship, and you would probably be in... Uh, you're, you're 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 in a continent filled with goblins, uh, uh, in a in a land filled with goblins, and whatever madness that would be. Uh, being uh, since you've been in the Ishtar regions before, Alis, uh, you would mm. know that uh, people consider it an infestation of goblins. Like literally, the Ishtar Highlands is just filled. It's just goblins. <laughs> it's filled like goblins, hobgoblins, ogres. Like humanity has no no ground over there to actually make anything worthwhile. It's it's muddy and jungle essentially. Um. Then I guess like we could see if any of the if any of the like chasma themed jobs are on the way to the mm -hmm. academy mm -hmm. um it, i will and, inform you that if on your way to the academy there will not be a cosma themed assistance to that i was gonna say then we could go to the inevitable and be like hey we really want to do this job but like there's this like super sketchy water over there could you like upgrade mm -hmm. our ship <laughs> 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 Um, like go to the inevitable and request. What do you mean by upgrade? What was your request? I don't know. I don't even know what upgrades Ironside gave it. Just a sturdier holes can uh, primarily sturdier holes and uh, cannons, specifically. Look, Lawrence said he could make it fly. Yes, so he could. How how cool is the inevitable? Couldn't he make it fly? I know that Armstrong hates the idea of it flying, but. <laughs> That would have to be something saying, like, you would you would request you'd have to request from the inevitable, oh God. and see exactly how that would go. I couldn't tell you we one did, way or another. We did say we were going to renegotiate the contract, which is just going to be a mess. Um. <coughs> hmm. I mean, we could always try. The portal's there, and it's not going anywhere. So that is correct. You already have a direct link to the inevitable by going through the portal. They have a vested interest in helping us. It's true. I just, I'm, I'm hesitant to tell them what we're actually doing. Um, if you do decide to, to if you do decide to speak with the inevitable, uh, let me know. Uh, because of the campaigns and maps that are used, uh, it would have to be the theater of the mind, but it would, uh, <laughs> be, it, it would be something, uh, that you can do just to determine your, what you would allow, what for your, for your outcome, excuse me. Hmm. I mean, you can always lie to the inevitable about what you're doing there. I don't even entirely... Is he just a robot? I don't entirely understand what he is. You don't have to understand <laughs> what he is from your interaction. <laughs> yep. You don't have to understand what he is. Yep. 
from <laughs> from from what essentially from the knowledge that you've gained it is just merely a placeholder from you, i i would say you would gather that it's a placeholder construct that functions as like the headmaster of the academy after levin's demise that is probably all the information you would know about the inevitable and it has an interest in protecting the academy and defeating Cosmicara. And that's it. That's all you, you un, yeah. From from your brief interaction, that's probably all you would have gathered so far. Okay. Then I think Alice, after after like the whole discussion happens about the how dangerous the waters are and everything, he would turn to everybody and say, "Or we could go back to the astral and see if they'll open up a portal for us or help." the ship be stronger? I don't know. As much as I'd hate to pass up a voyage like this, a month is a long time and it will be quite dangerous. If there's anything that could help us, even a little bit, it might be worth it. Luna nods. She says, and we, yeah, we did need to renegotiate the contract, so... Perhaps they'd be willing to help us. Kyron groans and rolls around. <laughs> I. Ellis will chuckle. Kyron, you don't have to come. I want to know what's up. <laughs> um, he'll look at Sterling. And he'll say, "If we go here, you're going to have to get used to a lot more weirdness." Sterling's kind of been writing in a book this whole time. He just leans his head up. Hmm? Oh, uh, school? Yes, sure. Uh, education's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll just traumatize him then, shall we? <laughs> oh, let's get it over with. Kyron stands up, dusts herself off, and grumbles, but is going to follow along. Right. Well, well, what's our angle then? We're going uh, to the Arcane Academy for mostly selfish reasons, I'd say. Just say you're gonna research the space baby or whatever. Jor. Yeah, Karen's right. Maybe we could just say we got a tip that, like, they have information over the, like new information or something like that uh, uh let me know how you'd like to proceed i'm ready for whatever you you decide yeah let's top through yeah yep yeah mm -hmm. might as well go for it uh okay so with that you hop through the portal Returning back from whence you came. Well, not from whence you came, but from where... An uh, 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 area that you haven't been in... Uh, well, it's been like a matter of days at this point in time is the last place you've been here. And guess what? Theater of the mind. No longer. I'm the fucking greatest. Oh, <laughs> oh. Dang, Brett. <laughs> God best. damn. <laughs> you made this just now? <laughs> On the fly. <laughs> damn, dude. We were able to get it all set up and everything. Uh, as you arrive and teleport uh, through the portal, you would walk uh, through one of the many chambers, as you recall, these... You kind of see out from the bottom, these are multiple levels of the, uh, the headmaster's office, or in this case, the inevitable's office, as you would be greeted and walk back here. Uh, plenty of, uh, of drones are continuously, that's a massive thing, ignore that, uh, are just continuously walking through the area as they are continuing their construction of your area to fortify and protect. So, let me see if I can copy and see it. Yeah. So they're, they're yeah, they're just kind of like continuously crossing through between the areas, fortifying, preparing for battle. As you approach the creature, the inevitable, 
the massive robot uh, and construct of unknown origins that continue to fil facilitate the Astral Academy. It will turn its head and jerk down, uh, turn it over to you guys. Well met, mm. Mr. Inevitable. Speak your minds. What is your reasoning for being back here? What do you require? What have you learned? Well, as one of your strongest lines of defense against Cosmacara, we've got an array of problems of our own that need sorting out. And in order to do so, we'll need to make a long sea voyage. And we were hoping as part of our contract negotiation, you'd be willing to grant us some aid in that respect. Processing your previous request, you had required me to defeat a pirate overlord. Is it in regards to this? Nay, he's mm. been taken care of. One of many loose ends we have. But curiously, once we were done with that, we uh, were told that your need of us has been adjusted a bit. So it seemed prudent for us to return and make sure that everything is on the level. That is correct. We still require a way to project and understand the attacks of Cosmicara. Without an, an ability to do this, it would provide most difficult. I believe I have sent the kobold named Rorn to speak with you about this. A dragon, yes, met him. an undead dragon infused with the power of void is within the constant of Kathos. You should be able to sail there now that your business is concluded. Is that what you wish to request? Above board, do we know where the void dragon is? Uh, yes, it was mentioned in the on, on the constant of Kathos, essentially. Um, from what you're understanding, I would say a few days away from where uh, Gubwater Keep was. Okay, so it's nowhere close to where we want to go. That is correct. It is on the complete opposite direction of where you'd like to go. Well, yes, actually. Um... That's precisely what we need. We are going to be going towards... Identify yourself. I do not know who you are. And at that point, Regions. the drones would begin to uh, surround in case you were an intruder. He's with us. Stand I am... Through. I am their lawyer, actually. Um, I'm here to make sure that the contract is entirely fair to them and that you uphold your side of the bargain. Adjudicator is not required for our negotiations. I'm afraid it is. So, the pirates of the misdemeanor will be heading towards Ishtar. They have business there that will aid them in the request that you have made to defeat this undead dragon. In fact, it is linked to this pirate overlord that they previously were fighting. Therefore, it's still under the common negotiation of the first contract, but because you require an extra feature, they are going to require extra aid. To do so, they would need a reinforced hold to their ship, some form of travel through a storm, perhaps some way to direct the storm away from the ship, along with resources and supplies to get them there. Does this seem fair? Processing. Uh, at this point, it will use its, uh, essentially its logic to facilitate if this is actually what needs to be done. It can actually go either way. The inevitable can decide that, yes, a suitable ship would be required to do what you need to do um, if it is in the aid of fighting against Cosmicara. However, it could also decide that with your loose end being tied request before, aka um, the uh, Ironside's defeat, the inevitable could simply dismiss this idea and state that you need to do whatever it takes to focus on the, the goal at hand and no other assistance will be required if it's uh, if it's unnecessary to the inevitable's mind sailing to kathos shouldn't require additional things and it believes that it has already issued you the power allowance needed so that you would be able to defeat your previous threat of iron side so i'm gonna go ahead and give a roll um <sighs> honestly i feel like it can go either way uh so i'm gonna do a sort of coin flip <laughs> one way to to lie to 
Oh. Push it one way. Does Maybe it... throw in... You there can't... is an item located in Ishtar that will aid in the defeating of the Undead Dragon. Currently, the resources that the misdemeanor hold are not adequate. All right. So for that, before I do my my fate roll, essentially, which was just just to, just to let you know what what it was going to be, but this could be something that we can look into. Uh, a roll of one to ten would be negative. Eleven to twenty would be a, would yield a positive result. However, that may skew depending on this lie that you wish to tell. Do you wish to attempt to deceive the inevitable? If you fail to do Absolutely. so, this may skew you more negative. However, success yeah. will skew positive. Also, remember, you are talking with a robot that cannot be so easily deceived. But mm -hmm. I will. I, will, I so think he's going to be purposely vague and say there is a magic item they're seeking. Okay. In that case, please roll a deception check. Come on. Oh, Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Joe. Let's go, Joe. A plus 12. He's yeah, good. Plus 12 deception. I lie good. I just read good. Oh my gosh. Processing probability. All right. I will let you determine on your own if you think that would have been favorable or the inevitable. But now I. I'm going to roll the fate roll. I will let you know that the numbers have definitely changed. Whether positive or negative, we will determine right now. Oh, oh. I'm doing that one. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. That one, the other way around. Ones are bad. At that so point, he rolls a one. No, this is this is a fate <laughs> roll for you, unfortunately. The inevitable what? is, mm hmm. As I mentioned oh. before, 1 to 10 is negative and 11 to 20 was positive. Yeah, I thought you meant like for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that is an unfortunate rule. The inevitable, unmoved by this, has logic completely dictated instead of processing what could be. This seems highly irrelevant. Time is already of the essence. You simply need to sail over to Kathos, record your battle against the Void Dragon, so that we may prepare the fight against Cosmicara. Any Our other... ship doesn't work. Our ship doesn't work. We can't <laughs> fulfill the order. It's ship impossible. Broke. The ship's broken. The Unless ship does not us, work. We need the... your help. Cannot yeah. process. Cannot process. Cannot complete objective. Uh, at this point, I will require uh, Luna. Oh my God. To roll a deception check. This will be at a disadvantage. <laughs> Come on, man. Dude. Mm -hmm. He's got most unfortunate anyway. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter what you roll at that point. The four is what it was going to be. And with another critical miss, uh, the inevitable will at that point interrupt. I understand that this is your typical negotiating tactic of pirates, lying and deception. It will not succeed here. Your task has been given, your contract has been fulfilled, and you will do so at the highest of your ability. No more assistance will be provided to you for menial tasks that will take an expenditure of time that cannot be afforded. We'll get to it when we get to it. Oh, sudden, oh! Armstrong, oh my back! Oh! <laughs> oh, I can't. oh no! Oh my back! I don't. Maybe we just won't do the oh, dragon no. thing then. That wasn't part of the oh. original contract. Do you know? Do you know? My back hurts from carrying all these robots and their stupid tasks. <laughs> oh no! If only I could go on. Oh no! Uh, but I oh, can't. I'm thing. suddenly so tired. It's the scurvy. I have. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Oh, an orange for you. An orange, please, to cleanse it. <laughs> oh. Luna is See, now look what you've done. You've oh. given first mate scurvy. Oh. It ignores your pleas. I think and we just want to do forward. the dragon thing then. Because we didn't have to do that. That was an, in our original contract. You want I... us to do the dragon thing, then you fix our boat. Okay, you know what, dude? Let, let's, let me ask you a question, Mr. Inevitable One. Let's say your legs 
you have robot legs and you need them to move. <laughs> and I have a contract with you that needs you to walk 1,000 kilometers north of here, okay? And if you don't, you void the contract. Your legs are blown out, you can't move your legs, and you need assistance, otherwise you don't receive it. So by your logical big brain, and not deception, because net one, don't assume that we're just dirty pirates, friend. What would you have us do? Teleport? Fly? Your little wingling pirate thing? Or your little wingling robots to give us a lift? Because we physically can't go where you need us to go. So yeah. how do you expect us to go with no ship that can do anything? We're not asking you to give us gold. We're not asking you to give us prosperity and riches and fame. We're asking you to help us to do our job so we can fulfill the contract, acquiesce to your needs of having us to deal with your stupid space baby and your unprecedented dragon. Now, my lawyer here knows the contract really well and has no problem finding the void clause that we put in all of our contracts. So you can take your logic and figure out how to apply it to yourself, mate. Its head will turn over to you. If your ship was insufficient and broken and unable to sail, at that point, we would consider your offer. However, it is. However, it is understood to me and the architects and constructors that are linked to me that your ship sails fine onto the beach of your home. It is there that I must conclude with your obvious deception that your ship is roll? in fact fine and that Can there is no persuasion? necessary and there is no necessary need for repairs or upgrades to fulfill the task that is at hand to answer your can question can you roll persuasion between the two failed deception checks well no between the critical failed deception check and the fate roll that is given mm -hmm. it is unable to pers be persuaded any further mm -hmm. than you've already told in if addition done, yeah it, yeah in yeah. addition by yeah. stating that your ship has been repaired with the inevitable knowing otherwise, another further deception, your, unfortunately, your negotiation at this point has been closed. Can we just not do the dragon quest? And D&D, &D, you are free to do whatever you wish. Bump this, I'm not fighting no dragon for this dumb robot. <laughs> <laughs> Luna's mad. Um, mm -hmm. Luna's super pissed. She's like, I'm not fighting their dragon. Take You're care tough. of your own business. She kind of marches out. Alice. Hey, inevitable. Alice, hey, come here. Yes. Hey, Leighton like turns his back to to all the robots. <laughs> like try and leans over to Alice as if like he's do? trying. Eleanor understands you, right? Uh, yes. Tell Eleanor to go to the portal and light the misdemeanor on fire. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> if the misdemeanor is on fire, we don't have a ship. Thus, they have to create a new one and or fix the misdemeanor. How about This is not deception. This is truth. This is in our contract. Leighton, I think it's best that we just do whatever we want. I will, I will buy you 50,000 books after this. I do not care. Burn the boat. I don't need them, Leighton. <laughs> um, Mr. Inevitable, if we were wishing to get supplies to go towards Ishtar, is there something you might require in return? Another State your inquiry. Well, we need a better ship to get to Ishtar. And I'm sure you have many enemies and many problems. Is there something along the way to Ishtar we might be able to help with? Processing. I hate the word processing. I never want to hear it ever again. <laughs> then let's go. What is your objective in Ishtar? Seen a few old family friends. It is to the understanding of the Academy 
as well as this unit. That Ishtar also houses a grave threat to the Astral Academy. The Exodus Academy, who attempted to invade this area not too long ago. With our magics fortified, we believe that the Academy is, we believe that the Academy is protected. However, further enhancements and protection is always welcome in order to protect this Academy. I will provide you with the bare minimal supplies necessary and needed to assist you with your journey. But in this, you must fulfill an exchange for me. You wish us to remove them as an enemy? That is correct. I require the head of the leader. <laughs> the robot it was the head. <laughs> it was blinks like eight times. That seems a little bit visceral. What if we can just remove her from the equation in a more civilized way? What if we can guarantee that she has no ill will against the Astral Academy? This is an unacceptable deal. I require the head of the headmaster of the Exodus Academy. Very well. V very well. Just, just trust very me. Good. Very well. Be warned. If this is a deception by you. Oh no, no, no deception. We'll get you the head of the head, the head of the Exodus Academy. Dude, whatever. You need us. Luna says from the back. She's like, you need us. You asked us for help, not the other way around. Don't forget that. It turns over to Luna. While this is correct that you've been requested as some of the more powerful warriors of Io, your defiance may prove more of a crutch than an actual assistance. We you know, Miss. Should Don't... we just quit then? You know, Mr. Inevitable, you're making us really want to suddenly root for the space baby. And at that point, by stating that, <sighs> shit. <laughs> he's looking like he's getting hostile. Shit. I'm gonna try and talk him down. Its eyes will immediately turn red. This Inevitable. logic has been issued by those before, by oh goblins my. that wish to turn against us. We no. will not. not allow that to pass. He was being poetic, hyperbolic. A now, human... all right, I'm sure we're fine. We won't, we won't. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Inevitable. Stupid dragon, stupid space baby, stupid robots. Ugh. The door is closed. Inevitable he was being emotional, response often prone to mortal creatures, and being hyperbolic, not literal. Of course, the people in this room require the world of iron to exist. So please do take it with a pinch of salt if you would. Uh roll a persuasion check at an advantage. Okay. 31. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> so, with that, its eyes will settle. The red, the light will begin to fade over into its back. I would like I, to just... I will take this currently as an emotional outburst. However, for the protection of the Academy, as well as to ensure that Cosmocar's powers are not further bolstered. An outburst like that will not be taken lightly again. Of course, of course. He'll be reprimanded for it in due time. Um, Mr. Inevitable, the head of the Exodus Academy, and you improve the ship entirely. Agreed? That is correct. I request right. the head completely intact, including, completely intact. including its brain primarily, so that I well. understand and am aware that it will be in pristine condition very well and it also i must also inform you as i was trying to before any deception will not be tolerated 
the steel is binding. I understand. In addition, so mm -hmm. by allowing you to complete your task against Ironside, as well as providing you with the fulfillment of your contract, you will still be required to face off against Cosmicara when the time comes. Yes, understandable. Separate contract, separate mission. Since you are unable to perform against the dragon, as the elven woman said, that will not be required of you at this time. We will find another way and another means of doing so. And you will hear a sound come from the uh, chest cavity of the construct. All right. Such as what? We will simply find someone else to fulfill the task. Or oh. find another way to do so, since you are incapable. Understandable. So if our inadequacies, we should be on our way. If you'd get straight to that ship, though, we uh, would like to arrive in the next month or so. Appreciate it. Unless you could speed things up, maybe some better sales. I will provide an additional an addi additional material to make your ship more sturdier to survive the storms. I will also provide better sails as well as as well as God, what's the word I'm working for? A An simple engine. A simple technology of burst power that will allow you to propel you to move faster across the seas this will require you to not be deterrent against winds mm. this should provide your ship be faster and arrive at your destination quicker how very kind of you all right we should be on our way though preparations and all that Acceptable. Thank oh. you so much. Do you depart at this point? Yep. God, oh. yes. <laughs> Kyron is skittering away. As soon as we get back to the house, though, I'm going to try and call everyone together. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and put you there. Yeah, my apologies. Hope no one was too upset over the outcome, but I have to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And the rules were not on your side this time. <laughs> it I'm happened. pissed. I'll never get <laughs> over it. <laughs> <laughs> Link, you almost got us killed. Oh, yeah. The moment you said that, considering the issue that the inevitable has had with goblins, it um, immediately was like, yep, not letting that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Luna's mumbling to herself. She's just like, T he calls us incapable when he's the one asking for help. What a joke. She's <laughs> that, like, super pissed. <laughs> that being, I don't care what it does, what it says. As logical as it's supposed to be, is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Agreed. Why does it want her I'm brain? Right. Oh, don't worry about that. I've got a plan. Oh, I was do. hoping you did. Oh. Of course, yes. We go there. We, we logically speak to the headmaster, and we have her hand down her role as headmaster to a rat or a rodent. We remove that head, and under the contract, we still fulfill the duty. It's not deceptive. It's the truth. We got the head of the headmaster. It's just not the headmaster by name, because he never mentioned a name. <laughs> I, the, a head brilliant. that belongs to the headmaster. I see. I yes, like this. We can play with it. I like the way you think. That's it. I'm sure we can convince her to do it momentarily. <sighs> the headmaster before was so kind and reasonable. How can there be such an irrational, supposedly logical creature running that place now? It was only supposed to be temporary, but I don't even know who would fill the gap. Well, it's none of our business, to be fair. It just sucks. Mm. Either way, Sterling, you really saved us back there. So all I'm good for. Besides... I've had bad experiences with contracts, and often they are very difficult to deal with. I understand the emotional outburst. But for now, revel in the fact that your ship is about to be upgraded. 
and that you get to go on your own way. Without... We don't have to fight that dumb dragon anymore either. Yes, fighting dragons is not fun. I need <laughs> ones I imagine more so. I'm sorry, everyone, for my reaction. It's all right, Leighton. I'd say it's okay, but also maybe don't make a habit of picking a fight in its own base. Look, pirate code is pirate code. We had a great contract, everything was fine, and then that logical being claimed that it didn't have to fulfill its end, even though, per our contract, it signed. Pirate it has code to. is great, but not everyone's a pirate. <sighs> it's not about the pirate code, it's about the contract. You just I said agree. pirate's code. Because the contract, the way I see it, logically, it doesn't make sense. They asked us to do something else, and logically speaking, any time a contract gets altered, that means that there's room for negotiation. They can't expect something of us and expect that they're not going to do anything in return. Like, I, I don't see why... To be honest, if it's a completely fully logical being, I don't understand why we wouldn't be able to negotiate on the basis of logic. Well, I, assuming the dragon we did was try to there. lie, that probably was not the right way to go about it. We wouldn't even listen to the truth, though, so we had no choice but to lie. And I was telling the truth. We couldn't get to our destination where we wanted to go in the statement that I phrased with the boat that we currently have. <laughs> <laughs> to... It's not possible. <laughs> and and I, I also just want to point out, just saying, that this being... Oh, crap. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, just no. Layton like, just stopped just talking. <laughs> what was I saying? Pause uh, to uh, to be fair, you did uh, originally pitch it as a magic item you needed to get in Ishtar to assist. So you were. Oh, oh, oh no, I got it, I got it, I got it now. Mm -hmm. To be fair, this being, I don't know if you guys paid attention, said that it helped us in our battle with Ironside, it granted us help and time. It's not part of the contract. That wasn't the part of the contract at all. Yeah. And it, it acted like we owe him. We stopped a being from destroying our own world out of, out of the sake of, well, we have our own problems. We're going to go handle them. That one wasn't in the contract. And two, he provided nothing. Shen exactly. here provided so much more. And he had nothing to do with the contract at all. He wouldn't even let me, he wouldn't let me put Shen in the contract. I wanted to put Shen in. And he said no. Shen waves, hello. <laughs> I agree. Hi, For a being that's supposed to be so logical, he didn't even get the facts straight. I, I honestly question this uh, supposed academy headmaster, whatever he is, because he, he, he's not, he can't even get his facts straight. I I... <sighs> but why does he want the brain? <laughs> it was just all stuck Another thing it. that doesn't make any sense. True. When do robots want brains? That's like a barbaric organic creature thing to want, you know? Yeah. Like, bring me the head of somebody. Like, why would a robot want someone's head? On Nothing that logical note, about can that. Can I just point out that he took your blood? Yes! Yes! Thank you! <laughs> he took our blood! He took our blood! He <laughs> everyone, this everyone is kind of <laughs> No, just Luna and I. He wanted the blood of arcane casters. And the brain of the wizard? What kind of technology why, why is that? Just, just None of this makes why you sense. Would do that. I... It wouldn't let us leave. Portal, Ster quote unquote, Sterling, like... Sterling goes, oh no. Joe Fudge goes, oh no. <laughs> he, he wouldn't let us leave. He, he supposedly required the blood of a spellcaster, a wizard, or something like to, to make a portal to get out of there. And he got to leave, to be honest. He took and so much from us, too. It was more to... than a, a prick. Oh. We actually... And another thing to point out, no one told us about this baby having a sleeper agent come and kill us. Exactly. It was not in the contract. It was not just, oh, let's go out to the middle of the ocean and just fight for the space babies. No, no one told us. We did not get captured. It was not an uncar contract. That logical being, fine. I don't care. We do whatever we want. I'm with the team here. But as far as I'm concerned, I will I will walk. I will walk to where we need to to prove a point. I, I would rather not prove that point. We're going to have a nice ship. It's fine. The, all the, uh, any robots that I've ever encountered or heard about, like, 
logic is based on when like i i wasn't the one who said the thing about like going to ishtar to get a particular thing i just made the argument that where we had to go we weren't capable of going there which was the truth i wasn't trying to deceive him he's there's something just not right about this and i i know goblins are goblins but it makes me wonder what exactly caused them to defect well constructs aren't all perfect they were created by an imperfect being Whoever created the inevitable was clearly capable of mistakes. Who created the inevitable? <laughs> Looks at Sterling for the Did answers. You know? <laughs> I just met him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, going. Academy. Just so we're all clear, Sterling, you are now the official contract person for our crew. Your negotiation <laughs> skills. Top notch. Agreed. Very good. Oh, and also I should say this as well. Captain Armstrong, um, Stan is going to step up towards him and show him the book. I, uh, I imagine that um, we have a fair bit of time on the sea, so I'd like to hear all the stories of your ship. And then he holds open the front page and it says, The Memoirs of the Misdemeanor. Oh, I hope oh, oh. write down all the escapades. Aye. I'll fill this thing from cover to cover. <laughs> Good. And then we'll publish it. Oh. Stand to make some healthy coin from that. So, with that, is that what you all have committed to? Um, you'll be sailing to the Ishtar regions to go to the Arcane Academy, is that correct? Hmm. Yep. All right. Yep. So with that, let me go ahead and explain a couple of things that will happen uh, before the next session. And just so that you all are aware of everything that is going on. Uh, your ship will receive a significant upgrade that will allow you to sail more effectively. Uh, the hulls will be increased, which means the ship's overall hit points will be increased. Uh, with the improved uh, sort of like a different material of sails, uh, this will allow you to use the wind more effectively, uh, allowing you to be faster on the ocean. Uh, you sort of also are getting um, <laughs> what I can only describe is a, uh, a, a lower quality, uh, but still very high quality for you, uh, engine uh, that will be placed aboard the ship, allowing your ship to now become sort of a steamship now instead of a normal ship. Um, this will allow you to not need this, the, the winds. Uh, to continue to sail and provide also an additional burst of speed uh, if the winds are uh, uh, on your side at that point in time. This will allow you to also push more effectively through the Serpent Smile. Uh, the Serpent Smile will still present a fair share of dangers, uh, but less so now that you have the upgrades to your ship. Um, I'm hoping by next week uh, that you will have an entirely new ship map to provide nice. to nice. show the Ooh. the additional is it book powered by chance <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can uh, those in the library at the he, bottom yeah uh this will also include uh potential uh uh libraries that may be built over the bottom of the uh, ship um but yeah uh your ship will receive a a visual upgrade as well uh because you have turned down the void dragon fight and time is wrapping up against the Cosmicara fight. Uh, the ability to uh, see the attacks that the creature can do uh, may at this point be removed, uh, making the combat against Cosmicara that much more difficult since that is the decision that you all have made. With that sealed away and time of the essence, your journey to Ishtar will be the last thing you do uh, before the final fight against uh, the assault of Cosmicara. So, with those decisions made and choices moving forward, consequences set in stone, today we'll wrap up the uh, session of the misdemeanor. So, there Yay! you go. I love Yay! it. It's been so good. <laughs> Aww, thanks, Joe. <laughs> thanks, <Mom. laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 for the record, it was given to the under IO crew, aka the Radiance crew, who also did not fulfill it. So by not fulfilling <laughs> it, they went to you to go to fulfill it, which was then not Amazing. fulfilled. And now and you like, all nah. and now everyone's out of time. So this will this will definitely increase the difficulty of the fight a little bit. 
the uh nah it'll be fine yeah the the, the, uh, <laughs> the the winds of fate will continue to press forward uh based off the action or inaction of the parties so how many people had the opportunity to f do one of those side fights was it just the under io crew or was it was it like passed around the whole well let's see <laughs> Gob goblins did it and then they said fuck this and then went to the other side uh <laughs> you <laughs> you guys did it uh went to iron side they requested some more stuff from you you said no so then that's been closed uh under io has been dealing with their own stuff and are at this point just waiting to be asked to do the fight so that's been closed and the uh yeah the astral academy is just doing the best that they can do uh <laughs> to, 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 to hold down the fort by themselves to, to repair this <laughs> for this very dangerous fight so it uh <laughs> it is what it, it is what it is at this point so uh yeah yep 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 that is it so uh we're gonna wrap up today and we will do a big fan art section tomorrow but next week uh will be oh. the journey Oh, what's going on? Are you not free next um, week? Next week, I have my ambassador front page the whole week. Oh, so gotcha. from two to four, I'm going to be busy. Um, so we could either make it later on that day or just skip it. We're probably I can't do later. Yeah, we're, mm -hmm. we're probably just going to have to skip it because I know uh, Dodger has a time limit. So on yeah. the 14th, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think on the 14th, it sounds like there is a very good chance that we will have to um it'll be either depending on how things line up it'll either be the journey of the uh through the serpent smile uh or so i'm pretty sure we will have one more session um but yeah it's looking like the 14th so i'm looking so it really all depends on what is happening so um yeah we'll see uh but, but we will take off for next friday and um, uh, just as a another heads up uh the weekend of the of may 21st mm -hmm. uh i will be out of town i am taking a mini vacation for the absolutely weekend. i tell you yeah. good for you yeah, enjoy, yeah. Dude. deserved so Thank you. there is going to be hmm there may be a good chance then if the 21 first and the seventh are closed dates uh we'll see what happens uh along with the other storylines but we are getting pretty close to the um the fight against cosmicara so we will either right. have yeah so i was gonna say are there are there other like is there any i mean not that like it was open in the beginning, but, like, I'm assuming that, like, you don't need any of us for, like, any kind of cross-campaign stuff if you need us for it mm. in the in-between. I That's what I'm saying. I, I, I have some stuff to figure out, so unless you guys gotcha. are going to be gone okay. for, like... Like, obviously, uh, I feel like the, the Cosmic Car encounter will not be during the, the week, like, of, eight, of April 18th through the 24th, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But it may be uh, earlier than that, maybe later than that, and, of course, if there is a certain date i will pitch it to you all if it's because it, the cosmic car fight will more than likely be on an off day that is not typically uh mm -hmm. your scheduled session so because that's something that everyone would probably be gathered for um on different time slots the idea is it'd be one big session but it wouldn't be like a big session that you'd have to be there for the entirety of it would essentially mm -hmm. be like the session itself will kind of have its own Ep many episodes and shifts as a different part of the fight instead of it just being a big fight against one creature it's actually going to be a very elaborate like battle slash storyline so everyone's gonna be do everyone's gonna have a part um but it'll be through different things so depending on what happens over the next couple of sessions with a few of the campaigns we will either do one more session with the um serpent smile or uh we will skip ahead to when you guys arrive at the academy which at that point will also be <laughs> uh a part of the cosmic car fight so yep nice but yeah we'll, we'll we'll talk more of that offside and then figure out what work what times work for everyone um what everyone's availability is all that stuff i just need to see a couple more things that are going to happen with the 
Astral Academy and Goblins of Io, they're kind of doing some crossover episodes right now. <laughs> so once that all wraps up, I'm almost certain that's going to jump straight into the Cosmicara fight at that point. So, and then, yeah, then at that gonna point. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. And it's that's very messy over there right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's a uh, wild. It's, it's definitely wild, but very good. Um, it's really and, cool. Yeah, it's going as far as it can. But yeah, so essentially once that begins, uh, every and, and also at that point with everyone together, we uh, could also do party mix mix ups or things of that nature. Um, mm. If you have a certain time that you're unavailable to do so. But I'm hoping for anywhere between eight to 12 hour session. Um, but <sighs> but that's for me DMing it. That obviously would not be something that you would be required to take part in. Instead, you would take part of either like a two to three hour block and then it would move on to another section of the story. So that is the ongoing plan. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll plot ahead um, and figure out what days and times work for everyone so we can get that underway. But more than likely, it's sounding like it'll probably be anywhere between the week of the 11th, the 17th. So we'll uh, we'll talk more on that later, though. Oof, OK, OK, yeah. I think that. Yeah. Well, not the whole week, but like somewhere along that, you know, and it would be. Yeah. Just, yeah so uh, and then we'll uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely figure it out. And that would definitely be like the major comp. I feel like the major combination session with everybody as well. So it wouldn't be like that. And then also a D&D &D session. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll figure it out. But it should be fun. Sound Sounds good? Sounds cool. good. Very yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Very cool. All right. Uh, we're going to hold on on fan art for this week, but we will do so in a couple of weeks. We'll get a big old fan art section, okay? Sounds good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much. I will see you all later. Thank good you. session again. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you, bud. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye, you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate y'all. Ugh, everybody is skipping fan art. Norman, buddy, we got a we got a we got a set time limit, man. We're gonna do fan art when we could do fan art, man. Sorry for the disappointment, uh, but you know, my players got places to ble be. I can't I can't ask them to stay later than they have to be. So don't 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 try. Don't worry. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, sorry I pissed you off. You did not say anything pissed off. Yeah, in general chat, I don't usually, I don't do hypotheticals because the story's ongoing. There's no reason for a hypothetical. You know what I mean? It does that, if that, uh, if that makes sense. The story is written as is written, the actions taken, and the consequences set root. And to imagine on hypotheticals of what may have happened would at this point be extremely moot. So... With that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate y'all. Hope you all enjoyed today's session. Be sure to support our Patreon uh, over there. Uh, you can donate as little as much as you want. Make sure you are donating, however, responsibly. Uh, the Patreon itself allows IO to continue in a smooth moving fashion. So thank you so much for your support in all of that. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to our big Patreon donos. Uh, which include dip, dip, uh, Why Not Gemology, Baker Staunch, Wiry Traveler, Connor on DVD, uh, Starter Pack, Lopar Panda, Twitching Pickle, and Eagle Wolf. Thank you guys so much for your support. Great stuff. I really do appreciate it and appreciate y'all very much. Uh, if you'd like to join the community, our IO Discord is open to everyone. Uh, including checking out that fan art that we didn't have time to get to this week. If you wanted to go ahead and look at that, I greatly appreciate that. And appreciate you all uh, very much for that. Head on over there. Check out the fan art. Go into the spoiler section. Talk a little bit about it. Do whatever you'd like. It's a great community. It's a lot of fun. And follow me on uh, social media. On uh, on Twitter. Specifically. Twitter.com. We're trying to get to 10,000 followers by the end of the year. Which I think we're going to be able to do so. Uh, let me go ahead and give some shout outs. Apparently we got a lot of subscribers during the session. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Uh, BT Bollinger with the gifted sub. Looks like BT Bollinger is gifted a lot of subs. So all the gifted subs. I don't know how many you gifted in the end, buddy. But hey, thank you so much for all everything that you've gifted at that point. Uh, Eben Sky, uh, thank you for the tier one sub for a year. 
uh completionist also gifting a bunch of subs thank you thank you thank you super shiggy also gifting a bunch of subs greatly appreciate that uh boo boo thank you for the gifted sub to you naming carlson greatly appreciate that uh masay also coming in with a bunch of uh gifted subs thank you again for that i'm looking at all these gifted subs let's see what we got we've got gamer lawyer gamer t taco bell gamer dust cheeto dust cheetos gamer it's real good stuff, guys. Thank you so much for that. Sir Chunks gifting the sub to Bazman Diaz. Thank you so much for that. Uh, WS Shade gifting a uh, sub to Super Shiggy. Uh, Vuvu gifted another sub. Looks like Vuvu uh, gifted a, a bunch of subs at that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lack of some gifting a sub. Thank you again. Jaman gifting five subs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yo, yeah, Jaman gifting five subs, WS Shade gifting five subs, Mads gifting five subs, uh, Basay gifting five subs, Completionist gifting five subs, Super Shiggy gifting five subs. Very, very generous, guys. Thank you so much for all those ge those generous contributions. I greatly appreciate that. Jermaine Vian, thank you so much for the tier three sub for six months as well. Uh, Norman Fair gifting a bunch of subs. Thank you again for that. Uh, BT Bollinger, uh, yeah, just gifting a bunch of subs. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for now. Now. thank you guys so much for watching i may or may not be back tonight we'll see if i'm back tonight i'm going to be doing either a little more satisfactory maybe we'll do some buying advice crungs or i'm just not going to come back at all so uh so yeah thank you again uh greatly appreciate y'all very much tomorrow at 7 p.m est it's going to be hunters of io they are currently fighting off against a fearsome void frog is the best way to describe it the void noxious anuraba and some things are going on over in that part of the world. So make sure you go ahead, check it out, be a part of the IO world. If you're wanting to learn more about the inevitable specifically, uh, there's been a lot of inevitable lore dropped. So make sure you watch the VODs and go to our YouTube channel over specifically Astral Academy. Uh, where you will begin to learn a lot more of the inevitable and its purposes. Uh, those campaigns are currently, I would say, either a few weeks or a month ahead of where the misdemeanor is right now. So everything will be caught up pretty soon at that point. All right, guys. Thank you again for watching. Appreciate you all very much. I will see you all the next time. Bye-bye.